so can I? Well, I don't know if this is something I should save for the show. Um, is the bit that all of your episodes are going to be betas? Uh, so about 68's that. kind of a lot. 68's a little <laughs> bit of a lot. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 68 for Friday, the 12th of February, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, and that dude right there that's not dancing, well, you can't see the dancer either right now, but he's he's Kent. How you doing, man? How you doing? <laughs> wow, dude, like you got through that intro with I did. barely a stutter. Holy shit, that I was did. awesome. And with, it, with us today is uh, uh, Brycom. Wait, no, no. Uh, oh. uh, uh, Nestio. Uh, no? No? Almost. Ah, uh, 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 Bryce Castillo. Oh, my God. Yes. Hi. <laughs> How are you guys? Good, uh, man. It's so good to have you on. The the I'm actual here. the actual Nesh Complex himself. <laughs> Shit. I've, I've awesome. never been introduced as an actual anything. <laughs> <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> For those that don't know Bryce, he is a podcaster, he's a musician, he is Twitcher. an audio visual tech, he is a producer, he does all kinds of cool shit, wait, especially wait. for so Diamond Club. Would it be Twitcher? Is that like a thing? Twitcher. He's uh, a Twitcher. Twitcher. Uh, I, I guess, I, man, I don't know the- Twitchcaster? What... I'm, I'm, I'm... <laughs> What's the I'm verb like there? Twi- <laughs> I'm a Twitchy. I'm Twitchy. A twitchy. Oh, a Twitchy. Is that with an IE? <laughs> with the why oh no see <laughs> oh man so it's good to have you on um of course kit and i are, are big fans of uh the things that you do and the crazy shit that you pull off on the internet <laughs> yeah <laughs> well uh you, thank you, you i'm you have glad a, you, have, uh, you have a uh, sometimes uh, it feels like oh my gosh like things just come out by this by the seat of my pants but i'm really glad that that might uh, be why we appreciate it so much because that's exactly what this yeah. show is <laughs> exactly <laughs> i was I was just going through um, the Night Attack archives just a little bit today, and I had pulled up the episode from a couple weeks ago where the music didn't start playing at the start of the show, <laughs> and so I had to like do my own like, brum, 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 like <laughs> to start the show. Um, so there's always fun little broken things to be fixed. That, that was uh, was that the first show after the the stu- studio rebuild. No, that was um, that was the episode right after 100, after the big episode 100 thing. Well, see, that's that's uh, what it was. You were you're still hung over from the 100, and, you know. That's right. The whole seven day. Yeah. The whole my clap my famous seven day hangovers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, we're gonna get into some of your more famous exploits later in the show. I think. Ooh, great. Yes. Let's do it. All right. So, um, so Kent, how has your week been, man? Um, uh, uneventful. Uh, you know, busy with work stuff, but I'm not going to bore everybody with work stuff. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I'd, we had the Super Bowl on Sunday. We did. We did. And uh, and then now it's Friday. <laughs> so the Super so, Bowl. So was, that was my week. Super Bowl was, uh, was, was Monday for me, and it was at the end of a, you know, the 36-hour stint of staying up. Mm. Instead of taking a nap, I decided to play Diablo with, uh, with my son. And, um, you know, you, you got to put family first. So, you know. <laughs> true. That is true. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Diablo, I reached Paragon level. It only took me a week. It's a it's a pretty good game, nice story, and now it's just a matter of farming and killing stuff, which has its own delectable uh, 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 feel to it. So, is this is this um, Diablo three? Mm-hmm. Yeah, on, okay. on a PS4. I played it a while ago, back when Reaper Souls first came out. I was playing it on uh, on my Mac when I was deployed. And it kind of, I just kind of put it off to the side. It, you know, it's fun, but it's just like it was one of those few games that were on, on uh, the Mac or, or PC or whatever that I was like, man, if this if this translated well to console, I'd much rather play it on console. That's and, right, and and I I hear that the conversion for a controller um, was pretty good. It, it like, really, it really because is. it's a very mouse heavy game. It, yes, it is. The only the only problem that you have is uh, aiming. Sometimes the aiming isn't exactly where you want it to be. Um, mm-hmm. because with the mouse, you can select exactly which opponent you want to cast, you know, whatever spell against or, or shoot with your arrow or whatever. So uh, other than the aiming, I mean, the, the button configurations and everything else, it's, it's great. It matches up very well. 
cool. So it helps that there's only like like five or six commands that you can give it, as opposed to like in World of Warcraft where there's literally a hundred, like dozens, <laughs> hundreds. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah, yeah, not so much. But uh, yeah, it, it it it's actually really fun, and it's a lot easier to play, in my opinion, on the console. So I, I upped the difficulty level and just ran with it. <laughs> wow. All right. So uh, so uh, Bryce, how about your week? What how's your week been? Uh, good. This was a, a, a busy week. We had, um, a, a scam school shoot, uh, earlier this week on Thursday. Um, and, and that was, that, that was, that was pretty fun. That's, that's the kind of, we were at a new bar, um, for this shoot. This was our first time there. And so there's always a little like preoccupation of just like, oh my God, I hope that we're not in the way and that they like us and that we're buying enough drinks and all of this stuff. Um, but at the end of the night, it was it was super positive. We got some good episodes. Our contact like loved us. So um, yeah, so that that was pretty good. That is probably the biggest thing of the week for me. <laughs> cool, very cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, I kind of t- told Kent a little bit about this earlier, but I my week was filled with frustration. Oh, absolute frustration. So. Um, I had a supervisor tell me that the proper way to measure out a document to make sure the formatting was correct oh, was to, yeah. to zoom the word document to a hundred percent and then grab a ruler, a no. physical ruler, hold it up to my screen and measure it out that way. Like word, word has a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I was told that the word ruler was inaccurate because it didn't have the special marks on it that the special ruler had. Huh? <laughs> what? Even even the, even though the uh, the uh, the Air Force manual that that actually states how big or how uh, small the the indents and and margins and everything else are supposed to be, are is measured in inches, mm-hmm. identical to those on the word ruler. Right. I was, and you uh, can even type in the specific amount. Yes, if, if, yeah. if you want to go decimals, you can actually type it in that way. Like it's, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't use a software solution when a practical solution will will will, will suffice. Did that but even doesn't, work? Does doing a hundred percent even no, work? No, no, not at all. Not, no. It couldn't. <laughs> It couldn't possibly. Maybe maybe it does with certain monitors on certain resolutions with certain native resolutions. Maybe there's one or two out there that would that would right. match up perfectly. You'd have to have a mo- a monitor that had. The, the, it, you have to have it have a perfect <laughs> size pixel. You you could pos- <laughs> This is stupid. Something stupid happened in your life this week. <laughs> this is uh yeah yes 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 I agree. Oh. Yes, yeah, welcome to Amos's life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is yeah this is this is this is what i deal with this is the world i live in um so yeah there's there's that um and okay so there are certain names for things certain names for things and this goes right along with the, with the previous because this is actually the, the same the same person that i was dealing with um if i say that i have a memorandum and you say you have a letter are those the same thing no. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. A memorandum necessarily. is almost guaranteed to be a letter, but a right. letter but is a completely letter separate from, you know, exactly. Right, right. This individual did not understand that. So he was using multiple words, and I don't remember the exact words, but it was along those lines to describe things. And I was using more specific words, and he was like, no, <laughs> no, it's not a memorandum, it's a letter. Letter. Okay, so I'm being more specific about the type of letter than yours. Okay, fine. Um, so we went round and round about that. Like the logic of of being more specific using different terminology was completely foreign. I, foreign. I, I it, it, different day, same person. Like I'm, I'm. <laughs> like there. This is Kent. I'm so envious of you for retiring. Um, <laughs> well, oh I God. am. Even though I'm not wearing a uniform every day or having to shave my face every day, I am still kind of in the Air Force, uh, just in a different capacity. I... But yes, I don't. Is that a fart joke? Did you just make a fart joke? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
What? What just happened? I don't I don't know what you mean by that. So I'm a, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm a I'm a civilian employee. I'm a I'm a U.S. government employee working for the Air Force. Got so it. It's a different brand of airman. Now. Uh, and I'm and, and I'm oh, still I'm a uni I, uniform I, wearing. I, I did not put. Uh, oh yeah, just okay. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm, also known as a fart joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From here on out, my my new career is now a fart, fart joke. joke. Um, Thanks, Bryce. Now, now the, the <laughs> <laughs> now the other thing that I want to mention, and okay, so um, we'll get to this in a little bit. But I watched Deadpool last night uh, here on base. No spoilers. No, no, I'm not going to spoil anything. But if you know anything about Deadpool, you know that it is a off color comedy. Absolutely. No. I mean, there, I mean, there's some some drama to it, stuff like that. But for the most part, it's an off color comedy. I mean, there's you know, it's... high action, high vulgarity. Yes. High Yes, so uh, we're watching. <laughs> we're, we're, and everybody we're, knows that going in. Yes, you yes, don't that's, know about Deadpool. That, that's if you how don't it's. Know that it's not. That's how it's advertised. You know, right. like it's there's no secret. It's not like you're gonna walk in and be like, oh my god, you know. I mean, unless unless you're a date on a Valentine's thing, in which case you just fell for <laughs> a good joke. So um, so we're we we know this going in, and I make a joke of it to the guys that I went with, some of the guys from from work that don't use rulers on their screens, um. I was like, you know what? So we're in an Air Force theater, and we're watching Deadpool. But if I were to stand up, look back at somebody that I know in the back of the room, they're like, hey, fucker, got your seat down here, you son of a bitch. Everybody would be spazzing out like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're using that language. Yeah. Because that's, oh. that's the crowd. Yeah. Now, we had a small debate about this. Okay, fine. Um, now, at, at the end of the movie, we're filing out the door, you know, because we go out the, the side doors because screw wait, you know, waiting to leave out the back. And all of a sudden, I'm hitting. I'm hit with this musk. This, this like somebody's got the most potent musk perfume or cologne, or I couldn't tell. Whatever it hit me, like like I physically felt the force of it as I passed through this one area. <laughs> and I look around, having just watched the movie, not even thinking about the earlier joke until someone mentioned it later. Um, but I'm like, uh, so who the hell smells like four ferrets fucking? I literally got like three people looking at me and one person said, you shouldn't be talking like that. What? Even though you just finished watching. The, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what that's is happening. Like that I can't, is, I like, can't make this up. Culture. I that cannot make this culture. up. That's like going to church, right? Like if you, if you go to church and everybody in the congregation are the same guys that you just got fucking shit hammered with on at, Friday night. At the strip night, club. <laughs> at, yeah. At the strip club. Yeah, it's You're in church. Yes, so you need to watch your dirty. And and I hadn't even left the theater. Like I hadn't even it's, moved out that, of the room yet. That and is instead on of church. Base it's the Deadpool movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. But this is on base culture. Yes, that's, these that's these are the double is. standards we live with in the Air Force. It's, yes, yes. Like, that's Amos. That is why I absolutely <sighs> would never live on base, except for that one time in Okinawa. That that cemented. Yeah, my my stance of I am it's, not fucking living on base. So, so yeah, uh, yeah, I just can't. I just, I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm dealing with on a regular basis. This is this is this is the stupid I live in. Um, yeah. So, that was my week. That was those those were the highlights of my week. Um, other than that, is just a bunch of writing uh, letters. I mean memorandums and <laughs> making right. you know. Making, no, you mean you mean letters, Amos. <laughs> So, so probably the highlight of my week is probably actually going to be tomorrow. Uh, my buddy Travis, mm. I know he listens and his wife Kim listens, so I, you're not listening now, I'm sure. So um, hello from the past, Travis and Kim. Um, so I want to send a a message from the past to you, Travis. Good luck tomorrow. A, me a message from the now to the future that will be listened to in the past. Right. So, Like you're covering all spectrums. In the in the future, I'm going to say <laughs> congratulations. I guess, well, be my future. Maybe. Your past, Travis. Hopefully, it's congratulations. Anyway, he is <laughs> testing for his black belt in Shotokan Karate tomorrow. Oh, nice. And, wow. Yeah, so it's a huge, 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 huge deal uh, for for him. Obviously, it would be for anybody, I think. It would be a big, big deal for me. And I know it is for Travis. I know he's been working very, very, very hard for this, and I'm really excited for him. So good luck, buddy, and hopefully congratulations. Yeah. 
Very so. cool. Yeah, that's uh, so there's that. that's one of those things <laughs> I could never. Uh, I don't know, me and karate, we just didn't get all all this yeah. <laughs> continual work and stuff like that. Like I like I like to see some kind of results sometime, but <laughs> <laughs> that and I mean I was only going to karate like once a week, so it's not like I was like you know super dedicated. Yeah, well that's that's kind of what I've uh, dwindled to because I was going like. <laughs> four sometimes even five times a week and it was just it became way too much i mean i was an instructor i was i was so so into it and i just i I just could not maintain that uh with work life family life everything else and, and also trying to do that i just i just couldn't yeah and uh now it's just kind of i don't want to say dwindled but unfortunately dwindled is probably the word it's kind of dwindled into a like once a week thing for me because there's this whole life thing going on that karate kind of it's and it's not the it, it's not that i don't enjoy it or that i don't love it because i absolutely love it but it's it's that time commitment man it's really starting to become a thing <laughs> so i try to get there when i can but it's uh yeah so, so no karate for you. Speaking of things that we quit this week, um, oh, I'm not. I was, I'm uh, done. No, I was. At, I went to karate on on Tuesday of this week. I was really proud of myself. I actually went this week. Okay, well, I quit. Quit karaoke. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah done. I just. It, it was, Were you doing a regular karaoke? Oh, well, I'm, I was. Uh, I was hosting karaoke three or four nights a week here on base. Wow, and uh, that's a lot of karaoke. Yeah. Yeah, and what it comes down to is again the life thing. Well, my work schedule changed, so now I basically I get off work and go straight to karaoke. Um, mm-hmm. And then the crowds weren't there, and the club kept changing the hours. And the, my uh, my the contractor I go through kept like he'd ask me he asked me to do the Super Bowl with like twenty hours notice, but I'd have to completely switch my my schedule around to, to make it happen because you know the five hour pregame and then the game itself and everything else. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just it's just too much of a draw on my time. I just I got other things to do, like podcasting. You know, I mean, if I'm going to spend my free time doing something, I'm not going to sit there and listen to people sing poorly and put up with drunk attitudes. And I think that was actually what it was. Somebody came in. We had like half an hour to closing, and he came in and was yelling at me because I hadn't played a song. He just put a song in like five minutes before, and I had like group of like fifty people that had already had songs in. Like I'm not going to squeeze you in because you want to cut me in at the last second give me a bunch of attitude and demand to be sung like no screw you move, move, <laughs> you move wait, on with, yeah yeah exactly so so yeah. it, this is the this place is a karaoke bar or it's a uh, or well, it's it's the enlisted club so like all the enlisted people can come to it um and there's a room off to the side that is it has its own bar and it's got a karaoke set up and everything else they use it for special See. events but on thursdays and fridays and saturdays we would use it for karaoke okay very cool yeah well uh it was fun. No, but... They don't know what they don't know what that miss is. <laughs> well, well they, I guess they do. I, I'm sure they do because uh, <laughs> I didn't do it at all this weekend. I'm pretty sure my other my other host that works with me is pretty pissed off because she hasn't texted me all week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that there was that. Um, so let's move on to some geeky things that we've done this week, man. Uh, Kent, your geekiest thing that you did all week long was the same geekiest thing that I did all week long. <laughs> yeah, and it's not even really all that geeky. <laughs> We we live tweeted the Super Bowl like we didn't even. We, what was funny about it to me was that we did not collaborate on this. We didn't talk previously or whatever. I was just like, you know what? I, fuck it. I'm gonna go ahead and just live tweet the Super Bowl. And so I got onto Twitter and I started tweeting. And then, oh, Amos just sent a tweet. Yeah. Oh look, he just sent another one. He just <laughs> like spontaneously was also live tweeting the Super Bowl. So it was kind of it was a lot of fun actually. It made the yeah. Super Bowl a lot of. Uh, a lot more fun than what just watching the game would have been. Yeah. Did you guys tweet the whole thing? Did you tweet the whole bowl? Uh, I yes. Yeah. Starting with yeah. the yeah. starting with the first set well, of commercials moving forward. Right. Well, and that's the funny thing. We barely talked about the game. I think I sent yeah. maybe three tweets about the actual game, and all the rest yeah. was like shit about the commercials or just some you know or the halftime show or just some yep. random shit that I saw. Yeah. <laughs> so so Bryce um. um I know you watch the Super Bowl. I I kind of did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I I um uh, actually the bar that I was talking about earlier, I was in there it just happened to be 
the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl just happened to be on in this bar that I went to. Uh, right, right. Of course it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Super Bowl Good Sunday. I'm gonna go to a bar. bar? Hmm. The bar. <laughs> and um, so I, I, I was there to scout this place out for this for the shoot, and so I had ordered a drink, and I was like, well, I'm here, <laughs> and the <laughs> halftime show is gonna start in 20 minutes, so. I'm watching the Super Bowl now. Yeah. And so I, I was tweeting about some of the commercials and uh, and uh, the halftime performance. And then uh, uh, I left a little bit after that because there wasn't much else there for me. But yeah. Um, so speaking of funny. speaking of the uh, of the halftime show, what did you guys think? It was uh, yeah, it was a Super Bowl halftime show. I don't, like, I don't like know. The- they seem so manufactured now. Yeah. Like the old ones seem like a like like you're at a mini concert or something. Now they just they're so plastic and just out of the box. I don't Yeah. I don't know. And, I, and, that, not, and now it's the big collaboration. Like if you don't have like 15 people coming out there to collaborate on it, it's just not a yeah. Right. Right. Well, cuz because you have to keep upping the ante especially for live television, right? Like it would be like stupid easy to do you know, the mini concerts that they were doing in the past because just the technology and the production uh, um, uh, uh, um, skills have just evolved so rapidly that, like, you, you, it's, it's, it's so much easier to pull in people at the same level that it used to be that just one, you know, for one band or something. So, you know, you, you got to get all artists together because then that creates news. And then this was the 50th, so they went back to these bands that had already been on the Super Bowl. So, mm. um, Oh, like that's I, a, mm-hmm. that's another thing. Mm. The fifth, it's the 50th Super Bowl. Yeah. I got so fucking sick of during the pre-show, everybody calling it the 50th anniversary of the Super Bowl. Right. When it's not, it's the 49th anniversary. It's the 50th iteration. <laughs> the first one was not the first anniversary. Of the yes. Super Bowl, yes. This is a, we've never done this before, but this is our first anniversary. It's not people, so the fiftieth <laughs> one is not the fiftieth anniversary. It was actually, yeah. But the, on I your, but like on your thirtieth year of marriage, that's your thirtieth anniversary, right? But you don't not celebrate really. your wedding no. day as your first anniversary, right? But exactly. I mean, if, if if at that point, that's just semantics. We're just deciding not to count one. Like it, that that seems. No, but <laughs> like when, no, when when you're married for a year, the first time your anniversary comes around, that's your first. Anniversary. Anniversary. It's not like, your second anniversary. Like, right. Right. So At like let's end- say you were married. Let's say you were married on January first, right? So right. you're married January first. It's January first, and I just got married an hour ago. Yeah. That's the first time on January first that you were married. One year later, this is your second January first being married. Okay. It's your first okay. it's your anniversary. first anniversary. You know, <laughs> I don't know. You're right. I mean it is semantics, but I don't know. It's one of those Every, everybody yeah. everybody has their peeve, right? Me. Yeah, it's just that. Yeah, See, anniversary is a weird word because. <laughs> but here, be here like, in Korea, annual though, annual is probably the more correct term. Right. But then, anno- <laughs> annual is not something to be celebrated. But see, here in Korea, you, know? you celebrate your first birthday when you're born. Uh, so every, see, everyone a, here just is like a, Europe. The first floor, like the the first floor of the building, is actually what we call the second floor. Right, because the first right, floor like the is the floor. Story. First floor is like the zero or the <laughs> yeah, ground. Yeah, it's the, the ground floor. It's yeah, the you've floor. Got the ground floor, <laughs> then you've got the first floor. And so, that, oh my God, that threw me off. Here's I didn't th- have a problem with that because that was the locality. That's that's their vocabulary. Right. Locally. That didn't bother me really once I figured it out. But um, yeah. so, I, think, I think the halftime show was was kind of was was all right. I don't like Bruno Mars very much and I hate Uptown Funk. So there wasn't a lot there for me. Um <laughs> I think Beyonce did pretty well, but I could always use more Beyonce. Uh and Coldplay cool. <laughs> So so Cold, Coldplay had like the strongest showing, right? Cuz they were like the headlining act. Right. But they also played a bunch of songs that were 5 years old. So yeah. What does that yep. say about them? Yeah, well, that, that's that was one of the things that got me was Coldplay is like they're doing the Super Bowl as a way to advertise their their world tour later on this year, mm-hmm. but and the new album that just came out. But you're not you're not pushing any of the new stuff. It was all right, right. <laughs> was that well, yeah? I think and that last song they played bef- before um, Uptown Funk was one of the new ones, right? I, I, I think I think one of their songs was a new. Yeah, song. Yeah, I think I, there but was it, at least 
part of it. But if you're pushing like, things forward, like you don't, I, I don't know. Of course, it is the whole the revisiting the. But past it's the thing. anniversary, yeah, yeah. right? You got to do <laughs> right. all the. You got to well, get Beyonce doing. Um, 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 oh, what's that song? Um, uh, oh, the new one. Uh, no, uh, oh uh, no! Well, she did formation, ladies. but then she did a little bit of the other one. Single yeah, lady. I yeah. I um, or uh, yeah. Anyway, but. So so speaking of Beyonce, I I, I tweeted uh, you know that uh, Beyonce is pretty crazy hot. love. That's what it's called. There you go, crazy in love. Right. I um, had to do it. I had to think <laughs> it in my in head, head in real time. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. What is it? Dun, dun, dun. Gotta do it again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy in love. Um, okay, so on that point, real quick, songs should not have choruses that feed in and leave the chorus the same way, like the music just loops. If you can loop a chorus to a song endlessly and never have a seam in the music, it pisses me off. <laughs> like the song Can't Feel My Face. That chorus, it ends the same way that it comes in, so it loops indefinitely in my head once it gets there. Like, oh, I can't yes. progress yeah, out yeah. of the chorus in my head. Become, okay. Instantly becomes an earwig. Yes, it's done. It's, like, it's that stuck. is a recipe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I know where... <laughs> so so my damn tweet god damn it god damn it. <laughs> yes. when so, so my my tweet during the halftime show was beyonce's butt am i right <laughs> so see i, I so put, yeah, that, I put that in was there, my my input i put in there that uh that beyonce was, was exactly one notch lower on the hotness scale than my wife and my wife texted me after that and she was like beyonce looks like a transvestite I'm not a fan of this Like, like, I'm not. What? <laughs> like, first of all, I I'm just not sure if that's a hit against equality or if you just really don't like Beyonce. I don't. <laughs> yeah, first yeah. I disagree. Second, <laughs> damn. <laughs> oh man, that like, that that had me on. Of course, again, at this point, I've been up for like 36 hours. I was like, <laughs> I was putting way more thought into it than I probably needed to, and I didn't know how to respond. I was just like, um. Okay, right. I'm gonna move on with my life. Uh, <laughs> so the thing about the, uh, the thing about the halftime party that, that got me, or the halftime show that got me, is they brought in Beyonce from where she lives in like Jersey or whatever, and Coldplay. Who knows where they're where, where they all live? And and Bruno Mars, he lives either in New York or like suburbia L.A. or something, you know. But they had a band right there in the Bay Area called Metallica. And they oh, didn't yeah, they even did. invite them. So Metallica they, put on their own show, live streamed, yes. during the halftime so that you could watch that instead. <laughs> if I had known that ahead of time, I would have been watching that. Yep. I completely <laughs> fucking forgot about it. I heard about it like two days before, and then I, yep, completely spaced it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. yeah I would much rather see Metallica, but that's just yep. me. Yeah. I could, I could always watch Beyonce recorded later. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it with Metallica. Metallica has a very has a very strict no time shifting policy. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny. I love their music. I think God it's funny that, that 15 years after Napster, they still have that that stigma. To <laughs> Damn it, Lars. Yeah, what a I think that was all Lars Ulrich. Yeah, good. Well, you, you remember the little clip, right? The little drawing yes. thing. Oh man, if I had that, I should have brought that up. But anyway, um, yeah, Napster bad. bad. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Bryce, you don't look like you remember what I'm talking about here. Um, well, he was bit. probably 12. When that <laughs> Actually, I don't. I have no idea how old Bryce is, but but it, you, yeah. <laughs> you pro- yeah, I mean, you're. I think you're so pretty okay, uh, all right. So here, here's a little something for the uh, for the. Youth. I remember. I remember the whole. Na- I I know Napster, and I, I I grew up with Napster and all that stuff. So so I I know that whole thing. Um, uh, here, here. I was already adulting for several years before Napster even existed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't like adulting. Adulting sucks. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. garbage. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, I'm not. what am I doing here? There we go. Um, okay, so he, here we go. Uh, uh, this is the. Oh, damn it! See now, now here's something I didn't have configured. Hashtag still in beta. Hashtag still in oh. beta. Okay. I just realized I might not be in the chat room. Oh, really? Ooh. Maybe. I know you were earlier. Oh, I thought I. Oh, I I wasn't sure if you guys were in your main room or, or not. We oh yeah so oh, yeah you went to um yeah you went Misery. to the the Rachel Misery channel. Yeah, we've been in the main room for a little while oh. now. 
Yeah, no, yeah, nobody, nobody, no, yeah. nobody migrates over, and nothing else is on when we're on. So, okay, so here's yeah. the uh, here's the Metallica thing that we were talking about here. Like, good afternoon. My name is, you know, like Lars Ulrich from Metallica. I've worked for years to get where I am today. Years and years of playing clubs and recording demo tapes. Me and my buddy, like James Hetfield here, have shed blood, sweat, and motherfucking beer to get where we are today. Beer, good. And now we're fucking wealthy beyond, you know, like belief. I mean, the other day was like obvious to me how much money we have because our basis, you know, like motherfucking Jason Newstead bought his very first gold-plated Ferrari, and the fucking thing came with, you know, like a crew of naked Filipino sex slaves and this Mexican houseboy all free just because he's from Metallica you know that's fucking rich man so where was I oh yeah all you post pubescent boys who have bought like our albums and our t-shirts and our concert videos and and and, and t-shirts Good. Yeah, t-shirts. You loyal fans who, like, bang your heads at our concerts and pay, like, $200 for a ticket, $20 for, like, a CD, like, $50 for a Metallica t-shirt, and, like, $100 for a genuine Metallica cock ring. You're all fucking awesome, and we'll never forget you. You fucking made us rich. <laughs> you fucking made us popular. You got us under the cover of, you know, like, Kerrang! magazine. I worship you. You, the Metallica fan. Beer. Good. Unless you downloaded until it sleeps from Napster, then you're going to motherfucking jail. You're motherfucking mute. You guys, You'll be some fat, like... greasy, tattooed bastard's buttery cornhole. <laughs> god, I haven't seen that shit in probably a decade and a half. Oh man, it's so good. Oh my god, uh, the the death of Flash <laughs> is going to mean the loss of a lot of stupid things like that. <laughs> yes. For better or worse, <laughs> probably for better. Oh, man. like um, like uh, do you guys know Homestar Runner? Mm -mm. You guys don't know. So that was that was um uh, a big Flash cartoon, uh back in back in the day. No, it it, it was it was um a, a huge Flash cartoon, and and then those guys went off and had kids, and and um, like started directing like um, uh like Yo Gabba Gabba, and and like. Hmm. Uh, um, oh God. what's the other, uh, the, the music knots, something like that. Um, and, and so they want to bring the cartoon back, but flash is dead. Flash is, is almost gone. So they have to like figure out, you know, uh, doing stuff on YouTube, but still having stuff on the site because the site is still flash. And then what do you do once, once, you know, Flash is going to be gone in a couple mo months or yeah. years. Or Get off my lawn! <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it, that's one of those things that, uh, like, there's so many funny things, like that damn frog blender. Remember that? Oh, like, God, that, that yes. Was, that was Flash, oh. you know? or the jo uh, Joe Cartoon. Uh, Joe super, Cartoon. Yeah, the whole Joe yeah. Cartoon thing, the Superfly, you know? That that, that oh. shit used to make me All laugh. All of Newgrounds. Newgrounds.com will just disappear when Flash dies. So the, yeah. the, the web page is going to be blank. So, oh uh, my God! So I mean, yes. like, like, how is that? Uh, you know, but then we we do have like uh, the Nintendo uh, games being restored on archive.org and you know the yeah. old old classic games like, stuff like that. So what they need to do is go ahead and start something to get that going right away. Yeah, like you some know? sort of a Flash emulator or something they yep. can just just. I'm sure you can make like an HTML5 Flash emulator or something. Of course, if oh, they, I'm you sure. Know, if it was that easy, it would have been done already. So, but, well, you know. Uh, there are some tools to help move some Flash stuff over to HTML5, and and if the creators have their original files, you know, Flash has had the ability to export to video files pretty much forever. Just nobody did it because there were because YouTube wasn't a thing. Um, so so a lot of this stuff, you know, it's totally possible that we see some of it. Um, certainly not the interactive stuff as much, but you know, car all the cartoons, all the great stuff that, you know, was really influential in in the you know mid to late 90s the new grounds and, and and all that stuff can can could be preserved um especially if if people still have source files um i there was an interesting write-up oh, i want to say a couple of months ago of like what happened to all of the the big flash i don't know if you like were into the flash scene like in the 90s i i, I had started looking into actually developing flash until i realized that i couldn't draw <laughs> <laughs> so, I know Movie but, Man Lucas used to make Flash cartoons. Mm -hmm. That was yeah, like so a lot of a lot of those guys, <laughs> like 
those were the original viral hits, right? Yep. Like the Numa Numa thing was not a YouTube hit. It was a flash thing. It it, it was a video. It, it was an, it was a video embedded in a flash file because that's how you had to. That's how you fucking had to show you know transfer videos like that. Um, but but a lot of those guys um, have have found success in the creative industry. And I think that's so amazing to have just had this moment in time where just creation, there, there was a whirlwind of creation of people being inspired um, in this own little cottage industry. And then, and then now uh, so many of them have found, have, have gotten, you know, real dividends um, in, in, in what ostensibly they love in an industry that they help bolster, you know, um, I, it's, it's really great. It's one of like the big, I think, achievements of the internet, recent, uh, you know, uh, in recent history of the internet of just that the whole movement starting around this this now shitty format and all those people, you know, not all of them, but you know, Migrating finding success things, and, and yeah. finding notoriety. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's it's, that's one thing that the internet is really good about is is if you find one thing and if you can just stay with it and keep going with it you can find all sorts of new new avenues to to travel down but if you're not willing to keep up with it you die very quick death on the internet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i i would like to comment that that bryce said the recent history of the internet all the history of the internet is recent <laughs> from my point well, of view well i don't know why, I don't know why just, you got to be a dick dude to separate it from like and i would challenge that fucking creation of I, the internet i, I, I would challenge that like, well, because, you know, it's not old history. The old history of the internet is it being created and connecting stuff and the interconnected. Like, fuck you, dude. Like, who I just made up. Like, I'll, I'll say it's recent. Good. <laughs> okay, yes. so I'm, I'm going to have to throw the challenge flag at, at Kent here because the internet's been around, been useful to you and I since at least 1996. 97, the very latest, which yeah, puts I it at about halfway through your life. So. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just calling it where I, where, how I see it, you know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it, it's not, it's not all the time throughout history that there is a an absolute world changing technology, yeah. And that happened in our lifetimes. Now, okay, did the internet itself was that invented in our lifetime? No, it was a little uh, bit before that. Shit, but, was but, it? The, but the, but the world wide web. I'm sorry. Sure. Tim Turner's Lee posted the paper in like 93 94 whatever right right for the world wide web yeah right so yeah, i mean exactly. the, the, so the world depends, depends web. on how so you want a genesis the, basically the internet as we know it the world wide web happened in our lifetime right and that that to yeah. me is that is crazy this well, is while me and you were sitting in indiana like whatever is going to come into the distant future this well, is like the bedrock while me and you were sitting in indiana using trash 80s people were actually creating the damn internet like it blows me away right yep yeah. We, we were hoping Offspring would come on the radio and there were people already transferring files and shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> Chatting on IRC and posting <coughs> to, to uh, what do they call them? Not, not message boards. News oh, groups? Fuck. News, News groups. Thank you. News yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that. Yeah. <laughs> I know my shit. I know my shit. So, um, I remember the, the first iteration of Outlook. Oh, you, my God. Or BBS. Outlook Express. You could subscribe to news groups on yep. Outlook. Yep. Yes. Um, oh my god, that's old school. So speaking of, <laughs> speaking of old school geeky stuff, Bryce, you've got something that you did that was kind of kind of crazy this week. So well, it, it's it's actually not old school. It's super new school, and I think it's it's a funny uh, uh, contrast to uh, what we've been talking about. So on Thursday, I sat down at the end of the day and just realized like how fucking uh, tech bubbly my life has become. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I I I woke up and and I needed to print off these these things um, for our shoot today, and so I ordered uh, printer ink on like the Amazon Now app. Like I'm in the that two hour delivery thing, so I got ink delivered to me, and Lucky. thankfully it was able to come in two hours because then. When the Google Fiber people came to install Google Fiber into my house, I wouldn't have to reset up my wireless printer so that I could print out release forms for the YouTube channel uh, <laughs> show that we were going to shoot, uh, you know, that day on, 
you know, uh, on DSL, on basically portable camera equipment. Like, I, I just, I just stepped back and I was like, God, I'm the fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> and title. <laughs> yeah. Meshcom is the fucking problem. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, uh, so yeah, that's, that's one of those things that, that blows me away is, uh, here in Korea, we have a lot of guys that just have little juicy phones. We call them little flip phones that have basic connectivity. Like they can get phone calls and text messages, but you send them a picture that it kills them, you know? Yeah. And I walk around with my iPhone six plus using mm. a, I have two SIMs, one for here and one for the States. Um, I've got full connectivity everywhere I go. The first thing that I do when I get on the plane and the plane takes off is I switch my SIM so I don't have to worry about doing it when everybody's crowding around trying to get out of the plane. So as soon as we land, I have connectivity. Um, mm. I, you know, I, I can't stand to be without the internet for, for long periods of time. I work in an office where it's a, it's a, a concrete Faraday cage. I mean, there's not only is it steel lined and everything else, but then it's built with like six inch concrete. So there's zero mm. signal. Like they, they, I think it sucks signal out of my phone and you know, and I have to step out like at least once an hour, step outside just to get my, my phone connect and see if there's anything new happening, you know, and check a little Twitter, check emails, things like that, and then go back inside. And, and it blows me away how connected I have become. And then, you know, we have people like you who's your entire existence as far as your, your employment, your hobbies, mm -hmm. your activities, things like that, you are completely are totally influenced in, yeah, by the You're completely yeah. embedded into it, you know? And, and, and I and feel like a cuss I, baby. I grew up, <laughs> like, right at, at, at the turning of the tide with the internet, right? Like, like I grew up with dial-up internet. I grew up without internet. I grew up, I remember when, like, it was super exciting when we got a Windows computer and we had all the AOL disks and uh -huh. and the it's all the dial up stuff and, and 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 being able to like live through that um, transition at a really formative time where you have a pretty good understanding of it. So it's not like you know, oh, everything's changing so much. I don't, I, I can't keep up with it. It's not that you gentlemen are like that. I, I, <laughs> that I, I would gentlemen. posit that on somebody else. He, he called us um, gentlemen like he doesn't know us at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are these gentlemen? <laughs> um, but but yeah, the the amount of, of connectivity that has come out of, you know, the past the past ten years, the past twenty years, the past two years, like is is crazy, and and it it's 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 kind of becoming almost. Um, I, I I worry a lot about technology enabling um, uh, uh, social divides. Uh, you know, uh, haves and have nots, right? Like, if you look at, um, I don't know if you follow like Twitch stuff very much, um, but Twitch is very, is on some level like a haves and have nots situation, right? Like, if you're not a partner on Twitch, then you can fuck off, right? <laughs> But if you're a partner on Twitch, you can go to the booths on uh, when they go to conventions. You get the hoodie. You're like the cool guy. <laughs> uh, similar thing with like with like YouTube, right? Like if you're just a run of some Joe Schmo, you know, you have, you know, a basic set of tools and a basic set of options. And then once once you get into being big or having a network or something, then you get all of these really advanced features. You get like literally YouTube believes you more when you say your stuff is not uh, like copyright right. uh, infringing. Um, it's 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 this it's creating these these pockets of like those who are connected and those who aren't, as well as a like a, deck, a, a split between those who are popular or famous or um, um, you know successful and and those who are not. And and I think that divide is getting getting bigger slowly um and so in, in in terms of like an uber thing right like if you don't have uber in your town you're not it's not the worst thing in the world you're going to continue to live like you have for hundreds of years right um but like if, if if the creative spaces like youtube or twitch continue to create those divides um that's i think probably the biggest failing of of the advance of technology is just by you know deciding that resources are so limited that you have to become this cool kids club. Hmm. Mm. See, I, I thought you were going to go a totally different direction and, and uh, I, I still think it's worthwhile mentioning. Otherwise I wouldn't be saying it now, of course. Um, 
I, I, I find myself when I hear, you know, because we're in a political year. We're in a very, very heated political year this year with the, with the primaries and everything else and, and the presidential election and all that stuff. Um, when I hear people talking about social programs, you know, I am, it's weird, but in my mind, it, it makes total sense. I support uh, free or, or very low cost internet to the masses more than I support welfare. Like hmm. food stamps, because to me, it, it's so important that everyone have access to the internet and be allowed to explore and see what's out there. And it's such an information superhighway and a way for people to express themselves creatively. That I, I don't, I don't understand why it's not a priority for us to get everyone connected. Meanwhile. Hmm. I have personal experience with so much corruption and misuse of food stamps from when I was younger or when I lived in California as, you know, as, as a teen and things like that, that it's put a bad taste in my mouth. And I think it's one of those things that's, that's internal in me, but it's still, to me, it's very, it's very important that we do not have a have and have not situation when it comes to internet access freely available, mm. you know, at least that that's interesting. Um, you know, I, 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 I very much support welfare programs and and am, am for you know where where local municipalities can run fiber uh, gov- can run fiber or just government run internet because it's usually much much cheaper than the monopolized internets. Mm-hmm. Um, but in in that case also, you know welfare we can't privatize welfare, um, and so for for as much as the monopolies sort of control you know internet in basically every market. Um, there's, 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 um, that there, there isn't anything that we can, we can do or, or that a, a private, you know, it, it's, it's like, it, it would be really fucked up for, to do some sort of welfare drive like PBS does for, you know, funding every year. Like right. it's, mm. but, but I, I don't know. I don't want to get into welfare, but, um, as far as the internet stuff, like, I think, I think definitely having more options in in that space is, is, is very much a good thing. And especially when it can be something like government, government, uh, municipality ones where they are like, uh, enacted to be very, very cost effective, um, or like something like Google fiber, which, you know, is, is only in a handful of places, but, uh, is, a, is a very strong competitor. Um, and speaking, speaking of Google uh, fiber, they're actually it was on uh, DTNS. I think last week, they're actually going to be hooking up low income housing with internet. Yeah. In in, Kansas, in in the Kansas City area, and that's a private company that understands the value of having everyone connected. And of course, you know they can. Well, they, and they they're get, also they connecting, you know, and ads government and buildings, speak. hospitals, right. um, you know, places, you know, non residential places, j- pretty much for free. And even with like, e- even if Google Fiber is in your town and you don't want, you know, you can't pay seventy dollars a month for internet, you, like they they will give you free broadband level internet for like seven years Mm. like if you pay to install it which is like a couple hundred bucks you get like 20 megabit internet free right and i'm I'm sure a lot of that is or uh, not ever yeah (laughs) for for at least one lifetime um (laughs) seven years well (laughs) seven years seven it's Um, like seven or eleven years but by then but by then if you're in a google fiber city they expect that that stuff to become really competitive right um it uh it, it it it's I'm sure it's it's there's tax write offs and everything else involved in in Google's decision to do things like that, but it's still, you know, it, then that just tells me that the tax write offs are working. If that's the case, you know, so it's it's kind of a I I like it. Well, and, and they do deals, you know, with 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 every government that they're in to to you know get space or to to get whatever tax you know right, for the infrastructure uh, and this uh, and that and yeah. right yeah man this, uh, is, this so has it's become very a, it's 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 a very localized negotiating that has to happen. This, this has become the ritual misery social hour. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this episode brought to you by the internet. <laughs> Liter- liter- literally, like literally. Uh, oh yeah, no, yeah, definitely. That's actually what's going on. <laughs> it would be really weird if it wasn't brought to you by the internet. I'd like to know how you're. Yeah, if, you, if you're getting are you this guys podcast by cassette tapes, yeah. If you're if you're getting this mail show now, if you're getting this podcast by uh, by carrier pigeon, let us know. Like we want to know. <laughs> yes. S- send a raven back to. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay, so uh, it's it's about time for this, real quick.
to... that was a that was an interesting little audio hiccup there at the end. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't oh. know. That was weird. So TED no. talks. Yeah. So all right, I watched one. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Okay, the last time we did a TED talk, I think was two weeks ago, right? And I I had the highest recommendation. Yes. I I am mirroring that recommendation. <laughs> this is fucking fantastic. I watched Terry Moore, How to Tie Your Shoes. Everybody <laughs> needs to go watch this thing. I, it's I, only it's only like four minutes long. I already know how to tie my shoes, dude. Oh no, but you don't know how to tie them correctly. <laughs> oh. There is a better way. Is, is there and a method? Terry Moore will show you how. <laughs> it is so simple. You're gonna be like, what? How did I not know this? You gotta watch it. Dude, oh. and it's from mm. 2005, and the guy looks like he's from like 1990. <laughs> nice. Like, oh my god, you got to watch it. It's so short too. It's like it's not even four minutes. It's it's fantastic. Highest level of recommendation. Oh. What, what no, I'm gonna check that out. I have a pair of shoes that <laughs> I haven't worn yet because they're high tops, and so I have to lace oh. them and 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 tie them. Which I'm used to skater shoes, so if there's an easier way to get some <laughs> shoe tying done, I'm would, all for it. Would they happen to be round nylon laces? No, these are. Um, they actually came with flat laces. Do, do you have to have the round nylons? No, 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 no. Those, those are, those are great. But if you have the round nylon laces, I highly, highly, highly recommend you watch Terry Moore's method. <laughs> Oh. Anyway, you'll understand why when you watch it. Oh but. God! Okay, so right. yeah, so high, high recommendation. So I what watched. Got, I watched uh, Michelle Wein Weiner Davis. Weiner Davis. <laughs> I don't. I, I think it's Weiner. <laughs> it's got to be Weiner. Yes, it has to be Weiner. It has to be Weiner. Um, <laughs> Michelle Weiner Davis. Uh, the sex starved marriage. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! The sex starved marriage. Brought to you by, by what's her name? Michelle Weiner. Michelle Weiner. <laughs> so Weiner. So Ms. Weiner Davis, please. She's got the hyphen. So, so <laughs> she's a modern woman. Oh so, Jesus! That's, so Ms. Weiner hyphen is a sex star. <laughs> got it. <laughs> like what are you doing right now, Kent? Um. So she basically it comes down to if you were in a marriage and one of your and one of the spouses is is unhappy, just put out more. Like it's 17 minutes of telling me, dude, just, just put out more if, if, or Hey chick, just put out more. That's, that's all it's saying. Um, it, it, there's, there's a little emotional stuff into it and she tells, you know, a couple of really quip stories and, and, it, but really that's all you get out of it. It's, I, I don't recommend it. I just recommend putting out more, which is kind of a standing recommend recommendation for me anyway. Just, <laughs> right. just put out more. Oh. Um, so yeah, there, there's a, that's, that's my summary of that Ted talk. Well, of course, we'll have, we'll have links in the show notes. <laughs> and part um, of her if, last name is Wiener. Oh, uh, but... um, if we're if we're talking like, TED talks, like you're totally stuck on that, Kent. <laughs> Kent, Kent likes. Hey, I, I got suddenly thirteen. Again. Kent, Kent likes the Wiener. Let's just go. <laughs> God. Well, yeah. okay. So Bryce, you got a TED talk to talk about? <laughs> so yeah, I, I didn't know this was a thing, but um, it, it, this reminded me of probably the the TED talk that I remember the most. It's from Evelyn Glennie. Um, she's an Irish Irish percussionist, um, and she's deaf. And oh. her her TED talk is about um, uh, truly listening and 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 uh, uh, understand and, and like taking music from just sheet music as it's written and actually doing it live and and giving it emotion and giving it warmth um and 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 about the way we live it's it's been a while since i watched it but but this got me this is uh, uh, y'all were talking about ted talks and this was the first one i could think of um when when i i thought about great ted talks so uh, a high recommendation on, on your part from that yes very cool and, yep, I, and this yep, like she that. does a great social experiment um with 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 uh hearing things so Definitely check it out. So I, I like that. Every time I hear about a deaf person, uh, either be being able to experience music or perform music, I, it's fascinating. I love it. It's great. It, it's such a different perspective on it. Like literally, a different different perspective. And yeah, yeah, it's pretty absolutely. awesome. So, um, so th those those are our TED talks for the week. Now it's time to get to our main subject. You ready for this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
We uh <laughs> Y'all ready for this? Don't 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 uh we're gonna talk about Bryce. <gasps> yeah. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Weird. Welcome to the show. Mm. Hi. <laughs> I'm happy to be on here. <laughs> All right. Um so this week uh, I I heard heard quite a few stories about you. Uh, yes, I, I want to I want to run them by you and get and get your your quick thoughts because I think uh, I think someone might have might have uh, they, they might have been wrong. About yeah, a few I don't things. know if there was if there was someone who who was stalking me or, or knew. I don't know. So so um, <laughs> so we were lots, already, lots of really big big high profile news items going yeah, on in your okay, life. Okay, so we'll, we'll we'll start. Well, I've got them. I've got them down in in the order that they appeared and it started circulating around the social webs. Um, okay. Apparently, you love football. Now I can see why you would think that, especially because I was in a bar watching the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Makes sense. Makes football's sense. fine. Football's fine. Do I love it? Probably not. <laughs> how, how, how many games did you watch during the 2015 2016 season? One. There we go. So that's <laughs> that's going to be a resounding no. I'm glad we clarified right. that. All right. Okay. So, right. um,. Yeah. No. Well, I'm, th- I think the bigger news, though, is that b- being a Twitch streamer, or what do we what do we say, Twitchy? Twitchy. Being a, Twitchy. Twitchy. being a Twitchy, and uh, you you were declaring your hatred of video games. Yeah, um, uh, I hate some video games. <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, I, I think uh, I actually uh, just played. I actually just played a game the other day that I hated so much I had to get a refund on it. Oh. Uh, oh man! It was it's it it, it was on so, sale on the Steam sale and it was like seven dollars, but it's like this potato like you play little potato people and you run a a blacksmithing shop for a video game universe and so you bake weapons and you sell it to heroes, but it was clearly supposed to be some sort of mobile or free to play game. But it cost seven dollars, so it just wasn't any fun. Uh, so it's seven dollars. So I hated that game. At seven dollars, you're basically. I love lately. Yeah, seven dollars, you're basically just getting a refund to send a message to the to the creator, <laughs> like like the, no, don't do this again. No. Yeah, this is a no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I I think I see what's going on here. So so all of these news items appear to be based in truth. Um, but exactly. Well, let's go with a uh, 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 Idaho farmer. Sounds like you're going to be you, you. You decided Austin's not your thing, so you're going to go to Idaho and, and farm potatoes. Is... You, you know, I think I understand the confusion because I I did go watch The Martian, mm. Mm. but I, uh, I I I wasn't. Wow. I, I liked the movie well enough, but I won't say I was so inspired to go. Got you. Got you. Okay. Okay. What about uh, what about being an ice fisherman? Ice fisherman. Is that is that something that uh, you've put a lot no. of consideration into? No, I hate the cold. Oh, oh, so I, I'm one of the really nice things about moving down to Austin is that our cold season was about a day long, solid three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so all right, not not. It was the... eighty degrees outside today, you guys. Oh, oh, it was in the mid seventies here. No, it was, no, well, it's, it was it's, uh, just uh, yeah. The, the thing that I hate about Texas almost more than the random assholes I've met along the way is the heat. Like really? I, I hate being hot. I, I would so rather everybody, be cold than hot. Everybody in my life hates the heat. Give <laughs> Not me the this heat. guy. Exactly. I fucking <laughs> love the heat. I'm with you, Bryce. Yeah. I am totally yeah. like you yeah. and me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck no. the cold. <laughs> fuck the cold so hard. I hate the cold. <laughs> fuck the cold so hard the friction warms it up. That's what. That's what's yeah. Going exactly. On. Just All fuck right. it. It's awful. Um, now, now there was a there was a rumor on here about you quitting music. So that's 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 the thing, right? Is like are you having someone tailing me. <laughs> hey, um, <clears throat> anyway, so what now? I didn't I didn't really <laughs> want to announce this uh, on here. Uh, you're you're uh, actually going to announce on here. Yeah. Oh, shit. really? Uh, Ritual misery exclusive, folks. Beep, 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 beep. No, uh, uh, no. I, I, it's, it's been a long time since I put out a song. Um, I, I actually, I, I don't have any music projects going on right now. Um, 
Too busy living on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> It's um, busy being in that tech bubble, I, right? Right. Um, no, I've I've tried making. I, I I've been working on some stuff lately, but um, it's kind of not gone anywhere. Um, I'm getting in this. I, I was having this really weird cycle of like, I I like doing music, and I I like uh, you know I've got the Patreon for it, and and so I want to do live streams of making music as much as I can, um, but. Uh, it it the 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 pressure of knowing that you're live and like having the lights and all the stuff like uh, that that's fine on its own. But then you mix it with the frustration of trying to make music, especially when you're not exactly inspired by anything or you're just kind of being a little aimless. Um, and then even if you get something good, I have this tendency to just kind of like get into just a real just make one really nice loop but not go anywhere with it <laughs> so i've been really frustrated with with the music stuff lately is that where um, can't feel my face came from is that what you did there <laughs> yeah i yes i uh, that's that's how i made the weekends can't feel my face um <laughs> but um i'm not I'm, I'm not quitting music but it's definitely i i I'm, I'm just trying i'm trying to do it when i can there you um, go so, yeah. so, so little little foundation. Some of these rumors, all right. Um, what about what about being a circus performer? There was something in there about being a circus performer. Was 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 there? Uh, um, uh, I am partially ambidextrous. Sometimes Ooh, I use that, my left hand. Partially that's, ambidextrous. That's <laughs> yeah. well. I I just spent like I, I just spent nine yeah. weeks in a cast on my right hand. So I'm more ambidextrous now than I ever was before. And what I found was. The things that I got comfortable using my left hand with, I still do. But then everything else, as soon as the cast came off, went back to my right hand. So, yeah. um, like I, I still I, eat with I a spoon with, with my, my right hand, hand. But like, I wear I wear watches on my right hand because that's not weird to me. But it's weird to some. <laughs> that's weird to some people. Like. Um, I remember because I, I used to be a watch wearer uh, up until uh, probably I don't know a decade or so ago, and it was weird because it, you know right handed. I wore my watch on my left hand. Except for when I was like five, it had to be on my right hand. Right, because that's was, the hand that was, you're using all the time. So that's the one that you want to use. Right, exactly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it was weird. But like when I turned six, or maybe it was seven, I don't know. But I was like, no, that's weird. It has to be on my left hand. Hmm. Oh, that's don't weird. Know. Yeah, I don't know. But I've also never stuck with a watch for long enough to like have that click of mm-hmm. like, oh, this is not great if I'm writing. Or I don't know why people who are right handed don't like having their watch there. My assumption is because it gets in the way when you're writing somehow, but I I've never had that. I've, I think it's I've never so that just you can started. write and check the time at the same time. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I I guess you promised that you would you would say, uh, you would reveal what you say about Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young when they're not listening. Wow. Uh, that's, that's 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 I, I mean, don't know. That's that's a that, talk about a ritual misery exclusive. Like, that that could be shit. that could be a little harsh. Well, <laughs> or it might be glow. I don't know. I w- I don't know. Like, Let's find again, out. I, <laughs> 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 well, so as far as like, as far as far as Brian goes, I, mean, I I've actually been very public about just talking about him. Like the 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 one podcast that I do um, is is me and the other the other guys who work with Brian talking basically shit about Brian for an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> not, 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 not totally talking shit, but, I, but we, we, we air our grievances and, and Brian's actually, you know, um, Brian's actually really cool with us doing, you know, the bizarre briefing and he doesn't ever be like, Hey, maybe don't talk shit about me. Like he's, he's really <laughs> comfortable with it. Um, don't t- don't tell people that I forget to unmute my mic. <laughs> yes, hey, a listener. Do we have a yeah. listener. <laughs> um, you know, he, the, the, it's it's. I mean, we're not lying, and we're not trying to like beat up on him. We're we you know we're we're pretty honest about about what we what we say. And then Justin's great. Like Justin is so. Um. You know, when Justin's on, he's like the guy that. Um, you know, you see in the podcast, he's he's very, you know, he's, he's active. He's very charismatic. He 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 knows what he's gonna say. He knows how to say it. Um, and when he's off, like he's just the coolest guy in the room. 
he he's so cool <laughs> and smart and collected um and i think maybe that's a side of him people don't get always get to see um but i think uh yeah I, I don't want to I, I I there's not there's not really shit to talk about those guys. They're, they're, they're really <laughs> the yeah, uh, and if, Kent and I have ahead. talked a little bit, and I certainly don't want this to become the 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 almost night attacker the 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 about not attack or not, the about mm. you know what I mean. Um, what? But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shut up, Kent. So uh, <laughs> we've talked about it briefly, and they seem to be like opposite sides of the same coin. Like they you know as far as their public personas, because you've got you got Justin who's very like very top of the head, like he's always coming up with, with things. And as soon as an idea forms in his head, it's fully thought out. Like he doesn't get like a car. He gets a train of thought at a time. And yeah. Brian's more like the, the, yes, I see that engine and I see that engine, but I'm going to go with this one because I like this. He's very selective about the, the thoughts he expresses there. There's probably 5 million of them going on, but he's very, he picks exactly which one he wants to go with. Yeah. They have a really great chemistry, that is is com that complements each other. Um, Justin is definitely a driving force behind a lot of the the the, the humor, and then Brian uh, br is is uh, is good about about taking things and 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 running with them um, as best he can. Yeah, uh, it's uh, the the they. Uh, I I was just watching. Um, uh, the little rock doc that we made about South by So Wasted last year, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we shot these little these little interstitials with Brian and Justin just talking about the event, mm -hmm. and even in that moment where they're either telling little stories or just setting up a clip, like there's so there's such a spark between them. They they're just so comfortable and and. Uh, I think that's what a lot of it is. They're just so comfortable with with each other, and that's uh, why, and, then, yeah. and that's why Bonnie and Ashley insist that they don't live in the same city. I'm just saying. <laughs> no comment. Fe I have no fe comment. Fear the spark. Fear the spark. <laughs> oh, All right. Geez. So, so en enough about the rumors. Let's get back to uh, get back to you, Bryce. Um, give us a little bit about like how you got to where you are, and I I'm sure you sure. didn't just show up at Brian's house one day like, hey. I'm gonna start producing your show, and uh, yeah, <laughs> let's do this. Okay, well, I'll take it back a little bit, but then you're gonna be surprised how accurate you just were. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I moved out here from Virginia um, in 2014, the end of 2014. Um, before that, I was working at um, um, at a local government, one of the city, local city governments um, near where I was living. Uh, because we don't have counties, all of our counties are separate cities, which is like kind of a clusterfuck, but whatever. And uh, <laughs> welcome to Virginia. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I was working. I, I was working in in like city hall, like for their um, the, the the you know your it, a lot of cities have their own TV station, and so it, it was there's like four of us that had that ran that station, and so a lot of what we were doing was like news packages and lectures and like AARP presentations and just like fun stuff. You know, it, it, it was a kind of thing where the, the, the silver lining that I could take out of it is that it was kind of like civic work. Like I was helping the community in a very small way, but it, you know, in, in some way, you know, and, um, uh, so I had been there for about two years and that was like my first like real, like real full time job. Um, I, I had gotten that at, at a college just through an internship there. And, uh, in June of 2014, this was when Brian was out shooting, um, hacking the system, the hacking the system season. Uh, that was like, hey, uh, we we were like tweeting each other or something on Twitter, and he was like, uh, you know, he 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 has a funny tendency of just asking everybody, so hey, when are you when are you moving to Austin? Um, and uh, and then we we had a little bit of an email exchange of just like, hey, uh, you know, we're 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 looking to do more stuff, and you've done, you know, I I I, I had done stuff for them. Um, in the past, you know, I had done like one of the uh, the April Fool scam stuff videos um, that year, 
uh, all the the fan remixes and stuff, and mm-hmm. and uh, so it was just kind of like, hey, are you? What's what's your deal? Uh, and I was like, and and I, I had met him at South by, so he kind of knew that I wasn't like in love with my current job. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we were talking, and I knew by the end of the year I had wanted to move out to Austin, regardless, right? I just kind of needed to get away because where where I was at, if you wanted to do video stuff, you were either doing like PR stuff or news. Or like weddings and shit. Really expressing your creativity, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and by the way, not a news guy. Like, uh, that's why know, we're an audio I, podcast. I, <laughs> like, I think the only like newsy thing about me is that I kind of have some sense of like journalistic integrity, but uh, you know, I'm not great at getting people to give me quotes. I'm not like the best at interviewing people that I don't know about shit. I don't care about. <laughs> and, uh, and it didn't help that I didn't live in the city that I was working for. So it, it I, I, I like literally could not connect to any of these people. Anyway. Um, so I moved down here and, uh, uh, and, and by the end of the year, yeah, I mean, that basically happened where I was just on, I just called Brian up and I was like, Hey, you know, I've done a little bit of stuff for you here and there. Uh, I'm starting to run out of money, and I just need to know if this is going to be a yes or no sort of thing. Um, and it ended up being that the mon- that it would just work out. And and uh, and uh, once when Zach left for Florida, I you know I took over his 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 role during Cord Killers, and um, as I got uh, more familiar switching with that, uh, it, it went to Night Attack and weird things, and then. You know, helping out with the new studio, doing scam school, and and uh, what I love about it is, is that it's a it's a a, a nice small uh, company, right? Uh, the bureaucracy of working in a government <laughs> is is not is, that we is, would know anything about that. No, not at all. Uh, you know, you can write that in a memo. <laughs> Um, it's strangling. A letter. A letter. A letter. <laughs> a letter. It's, it's a memo. It's strangling. And uh, <laughs> yep. um, so, so you know, being in a, in a small company with, with you know, with, with people that, you know, we have chemistry with. You know, I met all those guys at South By uh, the earlier in that year. So, I, you know, I kind of knew everybody and we were just we got on really well. And um yeah, it, it, it just happened to work out like that. And um, I always tell people when I tell that story to understand that they should not do that <laughs> because that's dangerous. <laughs> like, if Brian wasn't interested in hiring me, I, we, I wouldn't be right. He, I, my life would have taken <laughs> just a little bit. Um, so don't move halfway across the country without a job guarantee. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> That's a red flag. Because PSA, right, Bryce? Yeah, yeah. Burger King will only take you so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I to the unemployment. Line I mean, at one point, I was like, stamp. "Hey, listen, I'm going to go start filing job applications at Whataburger. I need to know if this is going to work or not." Yeah. Uh, wow. So, what did. what did you do in the meantime between moving to Austin and getting picked up for, you know, with Brian or whatever? Yeah, or was, um, that, or was so, that right away? No, it wasn't right away. Um, I I was I was staying with Roberto Vincent four zero four on on the Diamond Club network, and um, well on the Cosmic Radio TV network, which is also Diamond Club, and because uh, because we had been doing a podcast for a while, and and he, I stayed with him at South by, and and you know we we had a kinship. We're we're very cool. Uh, we get on really well, rather, and. Um, uh, and so I was doing like odd jobs at that time with, with, for Brian, like I would help do audio at scam school shoots or, you know, one time I was just manning the camera, uh, uh, cause Zach wasn't there or something. And, and so little things like that to kind of make a little money. And then I had had some money saved up, um, uh, for the move. So it, it was, it was about a month or two. It, it was by the very end of that year when it was official nice yeah 
It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but it was worrying. It, it, it was legitimately <laughs> worrying, which is why, like, that stress uh, is not advisable. You, <laughs> you got to have a guarantee. What, running out of money and not having a place to live for long term or food guaranteed or... You know. ha, being scared of being evicted <laughs> i got an apartment before i had uh, uh that job uh, uh, especially yeah. in oh austin it, it's not a cheap place to live i mean it's not a, it's not beverly hills but it's not uh you know yeah it's it's, it's not Alabama well and, and <laughs> like i ended up i was living i was living in kind of a nice place but it, it it was super far north so it was really cheap um but it was also an hour drive away to brian's house so right once yeah. that lease went up i had to move. it just wasn't tenable yeah. Uh, yeah so uh so if if you don't i don't want to get specific but what part of what area of, of austin do you live in now north south, um east, or west <laughs> uh uh, uh Th this is south this, this is going strictly on kent and i's limited knowledge of austin that typically the southern areas are a little nicer western areas are a little nicer and and then you got some 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 nice neighborhoods up north but then it's, it's surrounded by like areas you don't want to live in and <laughs> um that's like a set that's a pretty solid no um i'm living kind of south <laughs> southwest area I'm kind of living south by southwest you know uh, south, um, south by no, southwest yeah. is, uh, southeast. South. South, south southeast whatever <laughs> and uh um, it's a good thing you're there <laughs> yeah, i always get this city gets me so turned around sometimes i swear we're gonna um, be just south of the city right Amos? Well, we'll be we'll be there south of the river far. For where? Uh, when when you, you guys for, are coming to Austin? Uh, South by yeah. Oh great! Yeah we're, yeah. We're, I'm I'm bringing so, my trailer yeah, down. I, from I'm Emily. living I'm living south eastish of the of the river. So we, I, I actually um, well, I need I to I need lake, to con I need to confirm that uh, that we have that our reservation for the for the campground hasn't gone away. So because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I scheduled it like uh, I don't know six months ago, hoping South by would be the right weekend. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may uh, want to yeah. you may want to double check. Yeah, that. Uh, so um, it, but yeah, it, well, I, I paid a deposit, damn it. So if nothing else, I'll go down there and use the my fifty dollar yeah. deposit. I'll get back, you know. No, uh, um, apparently it's always the weekend of interactive, which we never put those. Yeah, we never we just assumed yes. it was first weekend. So, um, so <laughs> yes, so it will be. So, so I was actually out pounding pavement today, hoping to get a place set up, and we got some great options, but it's still too early to confirm a time or place. But mm. We, I could very solidly say it will be around the weekend of the twelfth, which is interactive. Right. Uh, so if, well, if if not, if it's not for whatever reason, me and Kit will I be there a anyway. A lot of people, <laughs> a, a lot of people are trying to make airline plans and hotel plans, and and I I just feel awful like not having it already <laughs> done. But I think I, I, we'll we'll send a big blast out when when it's confirmed. But. Uh, you can pretty safely say it's going to be the weekend of the twelfth. Cool, cool. And uh, so, it, since we're talking about it, what what have, uh, what ideas do you have for as far as, far as what's going to happen? Can you can you confirm um, anything, or is it all still just mud? So the big the big change over the last couple of years is that the guys are going to do a live night attack show. Mm -hmm. um, the last couple of years, it's always been just a musical event, or I think one year they did a go game. Um, but with Nerdtacular taking a year off, they're they're doing a hiatus to get ready for their big ten year. Um, the guys wanted to move a live show hmm. uh, up to, to South by, and and so I think that's what's going to happen. I think uh, I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to have our old friends the Possum Posse back, um, awesome. and 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 have a live show. I think those are going to be the major strokes of of this year. Um, but it's it's gonna be a good time, and it, it you know I, we're looking that it's gonna be open to the public again, so you won't need a a, a badge or need to buy a ticket or anything. Um, and and it's gonna be a good time. It's it's always a nice, uh, just a real casual time, and you can talk to everybody and 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 get to see all the Diamond Club people in person. Right. Uh, and and, and, and I do have it on on fairly good authority. Um, so I'm not going to guarantee this, but there, there's fairly good authority that uh, one each Tom Merritt will be in South by at the same time. Oh, that's almost definitely. Yeah, that's that's kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> short of a guarantee. Be because I'm, I'm interviewing him for my other yeah. podcast. So 
<laughs> oh well, there you go. Uh, I'm. I mean, I'm certain he because Tom's always on on the live show, so I'm sure he and probably Veronica will get roped in, uh, or somebody else. I don't. You know mm -hmm. that that we're still trying to get the venue booked, so we can't. We can't. It's hard to book everything else. Zero promises. It. Yeah. <laughs> No more broken promises. <laughs> yeah, we, we've already got we such end up a booking list the them. one bar that has banned Tom Merritt forever. <laughs> oh, from, oh my from, God. from back in Does his college such a days. Does place exist? <laughs> from back in his college days, you don't no, know. <laughs> everyone lo no, everyone loves Tom. Tom could never be banned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I, I want to visit the place that would ban Tom. What is this place? <laughs> it's, a, Can you it's a Luddite bar. There's no <laughs> technology allowed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Exactly. News news followed him down to Austin from uh, from Southern Illinois when he was growing up, and they just like, no, no, you're too like, you're too progressive for us. You can't come here. Yep. No, we, get out of here. You technology writer. Yeah. <laughs> we built barns in this establishment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. We still drink out of it's an car. Amish bar. <laughs> we still we, <laughs> we, Barmish. We, 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 <laughs> Barmish. <laughs> The the Barmish bar. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> do Amish even drink alcohol? Like is that don't a think contradiction? No, I, 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 Amish I, I, bar. That's I'm gonna open an Amish bar and see how successful I am. There, there you go. They, they, Rent out an empty building and call it an Amish bar. That'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> with, yes. With, candle it. It Just has to be candle it. Chairs. <laughs> But they have to be wooden. Oh, yeah. you know what? They can't. I don't know. It, does folding chair count as a technology? You might have to have a. Or, or is that? Mm. Well, they have. They they can have certain tech. I mean, like a, a horse drawn carriage. I mean, that's a. Come on, that's. that's yeah, it, even the, the horse drawn carriage. Technically, still has. that's technology. Yeah, I mean, it, well, most of them that are on public roadways still have to have like you know the brake lights and all that stuff. You know, the safe, yeah, the safety yeah. features. So do horse drawn carriages have brake lights? Yeah, I don't know how they're activated, they, but if you well, look, they at, do now. I guess. Well, yeah. they used to just have reflectors, and now I guess right. some of them are having like brake lights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I had no idea. How pissed off are the horses having fucking lights strapped to their ass? I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, well, some some Amish guys actually drive cars, and that and it's okay in certain communities mm. as long, but it, there's rules like it has to be black and. It can't have, I don't know. There's a list. Can't like, have power list locks or power windows. Well, you, so you, yeah. you, you remember like, back? You can in only the, have AM radio. No, yeah. <laughs> remember back back in back in the days when Eight me and Kent first came in the Air Force. Acceptable. Back in the day when me and Kent first came in the Air Force, um, the government would pay Ford because it was almost always Fords. The government would pay Fords extra money to remove the radios, so there were no radios. And and finally, somebody put put in a, an idea. They were like. We're paying money for a feature that we're not going to be using hardly any any anyway. So why not let the vehicles have radios? Within for government cars. Yeah, within three years we had like you know automatic windows and shit. Like it was like yeah. oh my god. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's yeah. It's because they, that's, they would buy these weird. fleet vehicles and like, pay you know, extra. I, like I know of like defense companies that are like you have to buy specialty phones that do not come with cameras. Um, yeah. And so that's like a very specific thing, thing. but it, like yep. for for like a K car or something to pay for it to not have a stereo that seems that's that's yeah yeah that's weird man <laughs> yeah. so so back weird to, one back to uh, 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 the barn bar um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. so so the barn everyone is banned, <laughs> what, what, everyone is banned. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, it's got, it's got candles to light, to light the whole place, little lanterns, oil lanterns. Sure. Um, you drink they, out of mason jar, mason jars. Right. Oh, of course. Of course. course yeah. yeah. You know, um, they, uh, they, they have a, a well built in. So you just walk in, there's just a well, they just sit there and they're, you know, one okay. of those little pump things, you know, they pump it and that's all they serve is water. Cause you know, or, or in <laughs> everything the, in else the, is the devil. Yeah. They, well, they have cows in the back, but you have to, it's a serve, it's a, it's a self serve. So you get all the yeah all oh, the refills so like you want, but yet yeah you have to go and and milk yeah. the cow yourself for the milk. <laughs> <laughs> How which, awful! Which would that is be? not a problem because everyone is highly skilled. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't go to a place like that if you didn't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that would just be awful. But I could see something like that happening, like as you know, as a little South by one off deal. We should totally do that when we get rich. Kids, oh let's do that. man. Yeah, that would be amazing publicity for like one of those Amish reality shows. <laughs> oh my god, like Amish mafia. Yes. Oh yes. yeah. 
Yes. Is that still a thing? Like, I haven't gotten cable I, TV in, I don't years. know, eight years or something. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, that, that would be amazing. So there you go. Breaking Amish man by a slushy machine. Denounces religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Sergeant Muffin is well wrapped up into the uh, the Amish community, apparently. He's, he's oh, yeah. <laughs> got new, news know. stories going on here. Don't you know. <clears throat> don't you know. That, no, that's 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 not Amish. That's Minnesotan, right? Well, no, it's Wisconsin, which Whatever. is where Sergeant Musson. So where it's where Sir, Sergeant, Sergeant Muffin. Lives. Sergeant Muffin. Yeah, he, it's that. That's, that's, that that's Sergeant, and Sergeant Muffin. They Sergeant, both Sergeant Muffin's cousin, Sergeant, Sergeant Muffin. Yes, Sergeant Muffin. <laughs> Sergeant Muffin is Sergeant Muffin's cousin, and his brother Sergeant Musket. Right. You know, and right. And, and, and that's and there's where the link with the uh, with with the Amish comes in. Actually, is the the musket, and then you've got, um, you know, the the I think what, guns are still. Are the Amish allowed to have guns? Um, hmm. Probably not well, automatic it probably weapons. Depends on the, yeah, I mean, it probably depends on the community. You can't have any machine guns, obviously, because machines, I mean, come on. Um, but, yeah, but that's why they disqualify machine guns, <laughs> because it has a machine in the name. <laughs> <laughs> they probably have muskets. Like, they, they go deer hunting muskets. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, they, they said that they're, they're, oh, they're I like to imagine they can only have unloaded rifles that have bayonets on them, <laughs> and they have oh, to use the bayonet. Oh, they can't man. shoot, see. but they can have the gun. Oh, right. see now, right. now that would just piss me off. Like I would rather just have a sword <laughs> <laughs> or a spear. I mean, come on, uh, a gun, gun with a bayonet's basically a spear. With a, with a, with a, with a, with a rock point, see point at the end, a horde of Amish guys just like fucking Highlandering that shit. <laughs> at gear. Except they have pitchforks. <laughs> oh, pitchfork. I forgot about pitchforks. You Can you mean, imagine you know? going deer hunting with a pitchfork? I mean, how unwieldy <laughs> would that be? <laughs> but if you had porches and you go at night and you surround them, Oh, hey, can can you can you spotlight with a with a torch if you're deer hunting? Is that illegal? <laughs> with like, a mirror, yeah. If you, if you get like a shiny mirror and focus the re- the light from the torch <laughs> into the deer's eyes, is that still is that like a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you have a lantern, I think they can have oil lanterns, right? Right, you right. Can yeah, do, see, there like, we go. Yeah. There we go. And then you just you, you synchronize your shutters to open at the same time, so the deer's like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get some guy. Sorry, sorry to- some guy Sergeant coming Muffin, along the side with a your cousin, Sergeant Musson, the Amish guy, if, if that's a thing. I don't know. That, that, that would be amazing. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so uh, so I ran across something this week. I bought, bought a bunch of plane tickets for a bunch of people, and I, I, was, I, basically, I was basically a travel agent for, for a night. Buy me one. Why didn't you buy me one? Um, you make more than I do. Ah, oh, shit. Do I? Oh, shit. You, you do, actually. <laughs> like, 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 it is known. You are. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that much more. It's like, hey, I don't know, but five, five three cents more a week. Three I mean, cents is still three cents. That's true. Mm. That is true. So, in fact, if you've got three cents and you'd like to help out this show, Chris, on a <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com <laughs> slash Richard um, Misery. So, uh, so, I was buying these airline tickets, and at one point, I was buying tickets for kids, and they were flying, you know, unaccompanied or whatever. So I had to call the, call the travel agency or, or, you know, Delta airlines directly. They were asking, and it, it, I never really considered it, but they asked me, of course, their age, their full name and their gender. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, I let them know. And the thought occurred to me, what if you are a cross dresser, dresser, um, a, 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 a transsexual or someone just, just, doesn't you know your your appearance doesn't match the stereotype of your your gender when is that going to become an issue and has it become an issue whoa so, so what you're saying okay, so, what, so what you're saying like like a transgender person so let's say that they're born with uh they're born male male, male, geni- male genitalia but they identify as a as, as female. A female right and then so what does the tsa want them to do they go with their like their birth time right. biology or do they go with like what they've identified and, as for the past 30 years and what if they're post-op and, you know so right so exactly i mean this is one of the things jay you could lie about it but then what if your state doesn't identify now your id well, and your okay. ticket doesn't match and this, you know this is what i think it is okay this is what i think it is because i i know god i'm a friend i'm 
friends with a guy who works at a social security office and your social security number identifies you know, not just your name, but other information about you, including your gender. And he has had individuals come to his window at the social security office to get their gender changed on their social security card or their, well, it's not on the card itself, but uh, their, their social security profile. Right. Okay. And I think, I guess now, what do, you would do, put do, for the do TSA have, is do you have whatever. Put, I mean, do you have to provide like proof? Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know how the, the I just, the, I just think this, the, the whole gender but, thing is a very, it's, it's becoming very fluid. Well, and, right. But I think it's like, think of it like hair color. Like, well, you, you could be you're, naturally if you're, if you're brunette, changing your right? gender like every week, there might be. <laughs> well, no, right, right. But, but let's say that you're naturally a, a, um, if you were born a, with male genitalia, is that yeah. what you're trying to say? Well, well right. What, okay. Well, see, yeah. I was trying to make I was trying to make a, a an analogy to hair color. Did, I mean, I know it's not the same thing, but but to make it easier to talk about, like the let's say you're born a brunette, right? But last week I went to the salon and I dyed my hair blonde. I go to the uh, you know whether the airport or whatever right. place wants to identify you with your ID card, and mm -hmm. it says that you're a brunette, but you're actually that you're standing in front of them as a blonde, like. Mm -hmm. Is that a disqualifying factor? Well, like, are you no, not going see, to be? No. The, the difference there. You, is uh, you, I mean, the, the whole point of picture ID is that you can see your face. Like, right. Right. So I see gender as kind of the same way because because hair color is one of the blocks on any ID card. Okay. But same as gender. The, the problem so, is no one's going to go and inspect your hair based on the color. So if right. you're if you're TSA, they're, okay, they're, they're not going to inspect your genitalia either. No, but they—that's the point that I'm making. They do though. They assign a gender-specific inspector based on your gender, so that you're not uncomfortable when they're feeling around, making sure that you're not hiding stuff under your boob. Sure, 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 sure. But really, like if a, so, if a woman, like who is actually uncomfortable with? I mean, I guess some you know some women look, would be or whatever. I, but but for the most part, like I mean, are you uncomfortable if you're being patted down? Whether it's a so, man so or a woman, if, I don't know. In that very specific example of of you've opted out of the TSA full body scanner and you are asked for a pat down, or you are are selected for a pat down or additional screening, and you you uh, uh, you know are assigned a male TSA officer, and uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that, I, I think you can just ask to to. Uh, be served by a female uh, inspector. Okay. Um, and and now uh, you know the the TSA is pretty obtuse, and I'm I, I'm sure that there have been stories of like it being obtuse. Uh, <laughs> of course, but, of course. So so as as it's, as it's a, not like a policy thing that's just going to be like as a male you know, that identifies male, and I get selected. You know, my random selection uh, because I'm wearing my 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 long beard and my little head wrap, my random selection, I get pulled off to the side to be, you know, to be more thoroughly searched or whatever. Can I then choose? Well, I don't want a guy doing the search. Can I have a female search me? <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable <laughs> with it, I suppose you could ask. <laughs> like... Because I'm oh looking at this God. as, you know, it, one, I, I, I like the, I like the discussion because there's certain, there's a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of the populace um, that that will can be felt that can feel very uh, uncomfortable in that particular si you know situation, just being just being searched at all, um, and then you add in gender bias and gender identity and things like that along with it. Now you've you've created more of a discussion. There's more sensitivity to it, and and a smaller part part of the population probably. But then you got people like me that will take advantage of whatever random situations can come across just to make the other person feel uncomfortable as a result of me feeling uncomfortable. I mean, that's that's one of the things that I do. That's just my personality. So <laughs> yeah. where where's the line drawn where they just say, no, you're being a dick. You're going to get searched by this dude right here. You know, <laughs> uh, here's what I'm going to say about this, because we've said a, a lot of stuff was just said. Um, <laughs> uh, uh I, I agree with uh, what you said a few minutes ago, Kent, that gender is 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 being recognized as being more fluid. Um, and 
with that fluidity, uh, uh, there comes uh, when something gets complicated. It's the it, it is you can either you know you can make a million policies to adjust for you know every instance, or you can sort of trial by fire and 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 try to just keep a, a you know a common sense sort of a, a human understanding of well this person who identifies as this gender uh it, you know it, it maybe feels a little less comfortable with this person uh screening them so is it possible that someone else can do it like it's it, it's it, it 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 makes more sense just logistically and and from a bureaucratic standpoint to 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 try to just keep a little bit of common sense and a little bit of tolerance for the the accommodations some people may request. I mean, it's a it's if you're if we're just talking about you know a TSA pat down, that's thirty seconds, and and you know cisgendered people find it uncomfortable too. Uh, and and you know if accommodations can be made, that's great. If not, then then hopefully that you know it's not. Uh, Something that it, where someone is trying to take advantage of somebody else, or, or, or you know, uh, because that would be wrong regardless. Um, so that's how yeah. I feel about that. Very See, this is just one of those conversations that I don't know if it's specifically going on, but I'm very interested. Just and it's only because the thought process occurred to me while I was buying the tickets and you know waiting with the little lovely music that Delta has on their holding. <laughs> But yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's one of those things. Like if 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 you're watching this and you've got some experience with this or anything else, let us know because I, I would love to hear the stories and and tell the tales. Absolutely. So, so email it, us at ritualmisery at gmail dot com. Yep. So in the in the chat room, big big boy four twenty says like the lady that wouldn't give a gay couple a marriage license just get someone else to do it. Well, the problem with that is she was in charge of that office and mm -hmm. she was an elected official. Right. So, uh, it 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 it, it was sort of her. Uh, official power to tell everybody in her office not to do it um and, and so that's that's why that was an issue is because that one office controlled the entire county yep. um and and she was uh, you know in a position of power um you know it, it, when it when it comes to government work right you you are working for the people the people generally pay your salary so you are it's why you know the government everything the government creates creatively is public domain because mm -hmm. the government can't own copyrights on stuff because it's made it's paid for by the people and so it gives everything back to the people and so um in, in those cases like that i think you know um it is it behooves government employees to work for the people uh and and follow um uh uh, uh follow the law which was the case at that point um, and, and to just, uh, to, to work for the greater, um, the, the, the greater response from the community, um, where in that case she had, you know, the, uh, a very strong religious, uh, conflict with that. And, and, and that does open up a thing of like, well, you know, if I feel like my job would affect my religion, then is it possible for me to do my duties? Is it possible to just ask somebody to do X, Y, or Z? Are you, where do you shift that stuff? And, and it's, you know, when it's someone who is not in a position of power, like, uh, like the, the clerk was, you know, it's, it's a little easier to say, well, we can make a little bit of leeway, but then, then that, that's where abuse comes from, from the institutions of, of people, of people on mass trying, trying to game that system or, um, or, or, or individuals and, and it's, it's tough, but the best thing we can do instead of holding our ground and saying, well, let's not do anything until we figure out the solution is to just keep trying to be as understanding and, and as, 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 and just common sense, just love each other. God damn it. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was about to say, just be a fucking human and be right. treat everyone like a fucking human. Like, come on, people, mm. come on. Uh, you know, I, it, mm, I can go like three different ways for that, but uh, I don't want to beat the dead horse. So, um, I watched Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so non. 
Uh, yeah, you mentioned it earlier, but you didn't really express your thoughts. Well, because I don't want any spoilers. Ne- neither, neither, just, of you, neither of you have seen it. Uh, uh, yeah. Bryce, we had discussed, you, you're not necessarily a Ryan, Ryan Reynolds fan, so that, yeah, yeah not, not jumping out to see it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just going to say go watch it. If you were okay. if you were of an age to understand dick jokes, go watch it. I mean, it's regardless of the actors or the character or whatever else, just it's 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 an experience. And Kent, you you have to watch it before next week because there's shit I want to talk about. You, yeah, I think you, we're you, gonna go see you, it on Sunday. You kind of have to. Like, I might go watch it again tonight just to to re, to balance out <laughs> some of the things that I was maybe may have been laughing too hard to hear the first time. So, um, <laughs> like there's, it's, it's, it was pretty insane. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And, uh, also, even though I've seen movies at this theater a couple dozen times before, apparently this was the first movie that they've ever shown there because the employees at the Osan, uh, theater had no fucking clue how to assist people with a massive crowd because there, I mean, there's a line out the door and everything else. This is a sold out show, but they they couldn't figure it out. Like people had come and bought you know pre purchased tickets and stuff like that, and yet other people were just walking through. We had a line of people that had pre purchased tickets who were waiting to go be seated, and then they had another line of people buying tickets. There's two doors, but everybody was using the same door, and then you had people that were like us. We were in line to get in. We'd already bought our tickets and everything else, but then the people that were in line just now buying tickets were being allowed to go straight into the theater. Oh, you shit. know, I okay. mean, and, yeah, and then bullshit. it was one they of were our, just unprepared. It was, yeah, complete, complete unpreparedness. And you'd think with a, with a movie like that, they're going to show it three times this weekend. And I told you uh, by text that um, uh, I think it was utter disappointment or something like that. Um, yeah, my disappointment yeah, yeah. comes from the fact they only had one showing. And oh, son of a bitch. OK. Yeah. All right. I, I was I, I was. God damn it. You had me worried I, all day. I know. <laughs> okay, the, your exact text was massively disappointed. OK. All right. So so last <laughs> night I, I, I got a text while I was sleeping that said I've got uh, tickets in hand for Deadpool. Blah, blah, blah. Right. right? <laughs> so when I got up this morning to go to work, I texted him. I said thumbs up or thumbs down. And his response was massively disappointed. And I did not reply to him. <laughs> I was just like, I was just kind of stewing on it, like, <laughs> son of a bitch. Like, it's got an 8.8 on IMDb. It got, what, what like an 80% or something like that from Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Like, every review that I've heard is like, yes, this is the Deadpool so, movie that we So, I, w- I will tell you one thing okay. about the movie. I'm going to have one minor spoiler, although I'm not going to give out any information. <clears throat> okay? What? What? Yes. How's it a spoiler? Because if you, if, if, if you know, because I'm going to allude to things, but I'm not going to actually explain them. So the, okay, be brief. the, the, the trailers, <laughs> yes, all the trailers that I saw, this is my favorite thing about movies that release trailers. If you're going to release trailers, don't make it the entire story. Just give me a little blimp, brief gr- glimpse of what's going on. Sure. All the trailers I saw occurred in the movie. If they occurred in the movie at all, they occurred in the movie within the first five minutes. Excellent. Wow. Like, oh, that's it, good. It, was, it was like, here's the shit you Excellent. already know. Now let's move on to stuff we never showed you. Oh, so, hey, that it, it was okay. perfect. That's good. Yeah. So yeah. you you weren't going through the movie going, well, I know this is going to come up, so it's going to fuck things up. It was like, here's the fucking trailers played in context. The rest of the movie's coming. Can I ask you a question? And you could just answer it yes or no. And I'm not gonna. It's not. It it won't be a spoiler. Okay. Um, and one of the issues I had with Avengers two is that if you walked into Avengers two not knowing what was going on, you were kind of fucked on just like understanding why anything was happening mm. um it, mm, it, with the point. deadpool movie do you need to know much about deadpool other than like he exists and he's around you guy know zero when it comes to okay. when it comes to deadpool knowledge i personally other than the movie i know the basics the comic book i've read a couple uh, uh, you know uh, like one or two issues uh you know where he's appeared and things like that uh, just minor stuff stuff i found you know oh this is interesting i'll click it and read it a little bit um, but I'm not like a Deadpool fan. I'm not wearing the fucking costume or anything else. Uh, and, and the information, like the backstory is, is handed to you on a fucking platter. Like it's, it is literally the formula for if you walk in and never heard about Deadpool ever, you would know enough about him by the end of the movie that you're good. Um, mm, okay. but it's done, okay. it's done in a very, uh, uh, oh shit. What's the, the uh, it, it's, it's done 
in a way that makes you feel like an idiot for not knowing while you're laughing mm-hmm. at yourself for not knowing. Um, okay. it's, it's, it's completely avant-garde. It's just, here it is. Here's the stuff. Oh yeah. By the way, I forgot to tell you about this. Here's a fucking cutscene. you know? <laughs> um, so it's, it's, and it's done really well. I thought it was the, the way it was laid out. It's not like he flashes back to a big fucking origin story or anything else. In fact, he makes fun of that during the part of, during the movie, you know? So it's, mm. it's very, it's very just, here it is. You can walk in not knowing anything and you're going to walk out laughing. Nice. Making, 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 making jokes about ferret fucking. So, <laughs> yeah. excellent, um, excellent. Okay, I feel so much better now. Yeah, yeah. No, see, and I hope that was spoiler free. If you've seen the trailers, you know what I'm talking about. If you've avoided the trailers, I didn't ruin anything. So fuck off. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we uh, that's that's all the topics we had this week. But uh, so we're gonna open it up. Is there anything else that uh, that we uh, our roundabout conversation uh, didn't tangent its own way to? Mm. I, and stun silence. All right. Yeah. No. I all I gotta <laughs> say is that I, this this has been fucking awesome, man. I I I really loved having you on, Bryce. Oh, good. This is I'm so glad. cool. Is such a great free flow conversation. I mean, we had a you know we had our little things in the show notes that we were gonna hit or whatever, but this has been just such a great conversation. Like I I'm so looking forward to Austin for so many reasons. Great. But one of them <laughs> one of them now is to meet you again because we actually met last year yeah well i don't we, at, you were walking around with a, yeah, yeah you were walking around with a camera right you yeah, and last South you by, and brant totally you and out. brant were filming mm-hmm. and you had the uh you know hello my name is or whatever and it said neshcom mm-hmm. yeah right yeah yeah, yeah that, that, Wait, and yeah we were we were so okay ritual misery was so below the radar at that point <laughs> that i have no doubt that you yeah no recognition whatsoever yeah i here's uh, okay i <laughs> understand two things about me i'm not great at remembering people i was at we were just at pack south um and there was a couple there that was hanging out with us on friday night and then we saw them again on saturday and i was i i i <laughs> <laughs> totally just blank on their name and then we also met up with them on sunday and then i also still did not recognize them as the same people so i understand <laughs> not great with faces not great with names but i'm gonna be very sorry about it so hopefully... <laughs> well awesome well hopefully right. you recognize us here in a few weeks what is it what hopefully. is it three weeks four weeks oh look uh, cat? i think it's hi uh, yeah hi little caddy hi kitty cat <laughs> that's billy um, badass I think it's by the way four weeks yeah, yeah, we're we're, yeah, get, we're getting it's close. Like four weeks. We're getting yeah. close. Um, so one more thing. We're, this is a, this is a new thing we added today, actually. Uh, Diamond Club news. So <laughs> if there's if there's things going on in Diamond Club, I want to make sure that other people, uh, especially after you know Bryce brought in the fact that we, we bring certain people on that aren't there for, to see the other awesome stuff going on. Yeah, on Diamond yeah, Club. Absolutely. Um, there's a new show hosted by uh, Justin Robert Young and Scott Johnson starting Monday. It's a it's a beta episode on Monday. And they're going to, well, as of right now, they're calling it Hotline Mondays. It has nothing to do with the Drake, Drake song, as they like to like to say. <laughs> Hotline Mon. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it's going to be Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern and 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, you can call in at 801-895-4724. It's going to be just a call-in show, uh, a live broadcast, uh, tech and geek news, things like that. Stuff they're going to talk about. This week, of course, is going to be uh, Deadpool. Um, more information at frogpants.com slash hotline whenever Scott decides to put the page up because it's not up yet. And uh, <laughs> hopefully by the time you hear this, if you're not watching live, you'll uh, you'll be able to catch that. Uh, the, one of the interesting facts about this, okay, so, so Scott's a big geek. Um, Justin's a big geek. They're, they're both really into tech stuff. And, and uh, you know, uh, Justin's got a journalism background and things like that. And um, But Justin and, and Scott are two very different people. Well, sure, sure. Scott's, well, Scott's very reserved. Um, you know, he he keeps a, a PG thirteen mouth on on his most explicit days. Um, Justin, <laughs> not so much. Uh, you know, unless it's DTNS where it's a news show, so he keeps it closed. You know, pretty tight to the chest. He's very open about saying whatever whatever he feels, using whatever words he wants to use. Um, and they're they're advertising this as a live call in show with anything goes. Ooh. And that that brought me to the mind, like, hmm, what kind of crowd is going to come to this? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really That'll curious be interesting because the yeah, the Frog Pants <laughs> clan and the Chat Realm crew the 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 Venn diagram of those two is not two overlapping circles. No. So it will be interesting to see um, who calls in. <laughs> the boundaries of that mesh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. gonna that, that's that's that alone is reason for me to to watch the show and and catch up on it things like that. So, um, but yeah, that's coming. Uh, if you know of anything else that's going on in Diamond Club, any Diamond Club specific stuff, this is not Diamond time. If you have personal projects, things like that. That's a better place for it. This is for Diamond Club News itself. New podcasts coming on, uh, people doing projects with Diamond Club specifically, meetups, things like that. Let us know. We'll throw it out there and we'll keep pressing it and, uh, and make sure that we get that out as much as possible. So, um, But again, this is not for personal projects of your own that where you're trying to get support, stuff like that. This is just keeping people up to date on, uh, on Diamond Club. So there's that. All right, man. Uh, so hey, actually, you know what? Like, I don't, I, I don't know if you, if you mind me pushing up a plug of mine. No, this is actually this, this, this is the time kind of, for your plugs, actually. Uh, <laughs> well, so um, to kind of keep okay, then then let's use this as a segue. Um, what the, the podcast that I do that I mentioned earlier, the Bizarre Briefing, um, uh, the U- if you watch on YouTube, it used to be on the um, the BBpedia videos YouTube channel where. Uh, the, a lot of the archi- the streams get archived or just uh, miscellaneous stuff. We've actually now moved that over to the Scam Stuff channel. So um, if you used to be following that on YouTube, you may want to follow youtube.com slash scam stuff um, to, to start seeing the, the episode we put out uh, uh, less than a week ago. Um, and if you want to find iTunes and stuff, you can just go to neshcom.com slash tbv. Um, Twitter and and on Twitch, uh, Bryce has B R Y C A S on both of those. Um, I'm trying to stream more. I'm trying to be a, a proper Twitchy, um, <laughs> but it's tough. I have a real I have, I have a real uh, odd schedule, so it's a lot of like late night stuff, you know. And, which, and which is, I'm trying to be better about it. Which is how I end up catching it because um, yeah. being in Korea, I've got you know a very different schedule. So um, mm-hmm. now I I do want to I do want to say. I'm not much of one to to watch uh, uh, a lot of t- people playing video games. As Kent knows, I, me watching people be- play video games is not it's not productive. It's it's just not. <laughs> so the other day, I was watching you play whatever that, that puzzle game was that with the little lines and the, the dots. witness. Yes, the witness. The witness. Uh, so witness me puzzle bags. So that was uh, it, it was one of the early episodes. Like you weren't very far in the game. You're still kind of trying to figure things out and stuff like that. And case in point for me, not watching Twitch very often, you were trying to solve a puzzle, and I saw the solution. But I was like getting ready for work, and I, you know, I was kind of just have it on the TV playing. And I, was, I found myself yelling at the screen, it's there, it's there. And then you, you, <laughs> ga- you gave up on the puzzle. Game. You gave up on the puzzle and moved on to another one. I was like, no, oh, I, oh, it, no. it was fucking there. <laughs> like, you I must have it. gone back to it. Though, but, so, so here's the thing about The Witness specifically. The Witness is kind of not a great game for Twitch because of that exact reason. <laughs> um, because, you know, I, I, and I, I told the chat room a couple times, it's like, I really would like not to be... I don't. I, I don't want any answers. If you can help it, um, you know, I'll ask for for an answer if I need one. But let's not. If we can, if we can help it. Um, and. Brow. That was from Sergeant Muffin. <laughs> I so, love the closing up the plug bag theme song, but uh, <laughs> I feel like you're going to get copyright infringement with that. That was uh, so I clicked it. That's in, fair use, total fair uh, use. Yeah, as I as I clicked it, I tried to hit the mute button and the pause button, and my little window wasn't active at all. It wasn't doing anything, so I I was completely helpless. I was about to have to close the tab. So oh, no. thanks, Sergeant Muffin. <laughs> it's still a beta. Still in beta. Still in beta. There yeah. you go. Hashtag still in beta. So um. Now, how did how did you get introduced to the witness? I mean, is that something somebody threw at you, or is it just something you found organically? No, I've um, it's been on my radar. You know, the, uh, Jonathan Blow, who created it, he made um, Braid. Um, he it, they it was announced years ago um, as as a PlayStation thing, um, and and um, it, it, I actually wasn't like totally sold on it when I when I 
got it because it's a, it's a little it's like forty bucks for for a puzzle game where you would think for an indie game you would expect it to be a little cheaper, um, but uh, it, it was a thing of like well it's going to come out very soon and it's available and it's puzzles and I really like puzzle games and Jonathan Blow makes good stuff so it was kind of it was a little bit of a blind blind uh, leap of faith but man. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. And that's like all I really feel comfortable saying. If you like puzzle games, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I watched a, a few of the later, the later episodes and it was, it had progressed to the point where there were additional aspects of the puzzles that I had to assume. I knew the answer, like why they were there and things like that. And I was like, so that's I, another I, tough thing of that game. Cause you have to constantly keep explaining. Now it helps to it, it, the, the one thing that helped me a lot with that, because the whole game is about solving these, these line puzzles. Um, and everybody I've talked to has been like, yeah, I've got tons of sheet paper of just like writing stuff out. And like, literally this is all I've written for that game. <laughs> like this is a kind of, it's, it's not even, this is not going to spoil you or anything, but you just um, pulled a Tom Merritt. Like just having the thing that you were referring to. <laughs> well, that's totally a Tom Merritt move. Yeah, yeah. Well, I learned from the best. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but it, but doing it, I only ever played it on Twitch up to the to the end game of the of the of of the game, um, and so I had to work at a lot of this stuff out verbally, which helped so much. Um, Though there are definitely things that, looking back, are gonna are a lot easier if you write them out, but um, I uh, uh, it but it's just it's a lot of internal thinking and like you have this pressure of people watching you and so you have to talk and kind of explain what you think the rules are because it doesn't tell you so you have to suss out what they are on your, right. on their own. And it's great. <laughs> so my uh, my big Twitch experiment was earlier this week. And I decided to twitch some of my Diablo three playing from my PlayStation. Ah. I actually created an account specifically to do that. And I, I started you playing. Did that. I, I, start, I started playing, and I was playing for like half an hour. And I looked over, and it says there's you have like like three people watching. And I was like, holy shit! Like people are actually like, how are people finding me right now? I didn't I didn't tell anybody <laughs> about it. Okay, they must have just be clicking something random can, or whatever. You can you can search by game. So right, people will follow games, yeah. so they can. They can see when someone goes live and, and, and is playing I, like I Diablo. Called it, I called it like, you know, uh, uh, Ethan Kane's uh, Diablo 3 restart or whatever, you know, because it was very early in the game. It was still, still Act 1. And I was yeah. sitting there playing it, and I, I was like, okay, I'm just going to ignore that. And I just kept playing the game. Then a little while later, my wife called, so I answered the you know, I paused the game, answered the phone. And as I'm talking to her, like, I see the number flip down to 2, and I'm like, oh. And then down to 1. I was like, oh, so there's the end of my experiment. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, another thing is, because uh, you were playing it on the PlayStation, right? Mm -hmm. um, the PlayStation has a Twitch app. So you probably, I think they promote uh, people who are playing on the PlayStation via mm. that. So if someone was watching and wanting to see something on Diablo on the PlayStation, you gotcha. might have been a little higher up. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was, it was just completely random. And I was like, I was probably playing for about an hour and it was just, it was fun to watch it. it Cause I didn't realize that anybody was watching at all. And all of a sudden I look over and I was like, Oh, it says a number. Oh, that's the number of watchers. I got three people watching me fuck up this game. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Nice. So, um, yeah, there's that. All right. So you've got so many things going on. I don't know how you're going to wrap this up into, uh, into a, a nice little, uh, package, but what, what, where can people find more, uh, Bryce. Uh, uh, more the more best place so or whatever whatever the other words I gave at the beginning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if 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 you want to follow the day to day stuff, uh, hit me up on Twitter at brycas b r y c s. Uh, if you like video games and maybe you want to hear me talk about them, uh, check out twitch.tv slash brycas. Um, if there's if you want to find out more about me, you can go to my website neshcom.com. Um, there you can see the shows that I work on and you can get a link to the bizarre briefing. Um, and then I do have a Patreon, um, uh, patreon.com slash Nashcom. I'm really, I really try not to push it very hard cause I'm not very active on it. Um, but it's, it's a music Patreon. So when I put something out, um, I send it to the patrons and, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a per creation. Patreon. Right. So it's not a monthly thing. So you're not on right. the hook when I don't make anything <laughs> a lot. And I've given, I've given, I, there was a point where I had given out more music that I wasn't in love with than, have charged people for so <laughs> like you just get on the hook for something and you'll you you will probably get a lot of good stuff 
There you go. Yep. And, cool. Right on. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, you've, you've got the Bizarre Briefing, and you uh, produce Night Attack, uh, Cord Killers, mm-hmm. all kinds of other cool shows that... You you don't you're not on the host list, but then every once in a while you throw in your two cents and you add something to it and and uh, oh yeah, which by the way I I love that over the last several weeks you have been making more of an appearance on Night Attack and I think that's oh good fucking great that's cool. See uh, the I'm funny so, thing is I I've, just mentioned to Bonnie so the same thing. That. Like I just told Bonnie uh, on Twitter uh, on a DM that uh, you know here lately you've been more more part of Night Attack and and adding to it and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and other than yeah. the times when she's self-deprecating, which I, I don't think she needs to be. Um, no, she doesn't. Need uh, to do sometimes that. it adds to the show, but usually it's just like, oh, he didn't. That's, you know. Just, yeah, it's, um, just, it's her being modest, but like overly. Yeah, overly exactly. Modest. But either yeah. way, she's awesome. And then you've been adding to it late, a lot more lately. And it's just it. it's part of this whole package. It's really awesome. It's, it's a fun yep. show to watch. Well, yeah, I'm it's glad. a great I, that, ensemble cast. And then, of course, you had that little about, edit. <laughs> about that because I, 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 like, if you just look at the history of me getting on to that show, it would, it, like, it, you could see it as really forceful. And if you don't like me, then it's just more reason to not like me. So I'm really glad somebody does. Um, and that, is there uh, somebody out there that doesn't like Bryce? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> There's that one guy. Uh, that I, one I don't guy. know, but I also don't read Total Drama. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fuck them. So if, the, if they don't like you, then what? It, all right. Well, let's not. We, no, we love the patrons, yeah. though. We love the Patreon. Patreon. Oh, also. yes. <laughs> Patreon. Patreon. Duck, yeah, anyway. yeah. So, anyway. Can, <laughs> can you, you're holding a beer there. Do you like beer? I love beer, man. And I like writing about beer. If you go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche, you'll find like almost 500 beer reviews that I've written. It's awesome. So, yeah, so there's that. Um, but if you really want to know what's going on, go to twitter.com and I am at rm underscore del noche. Check me out there. Where you at, Amos? Uh, first of all, I just want to say that uh, for the, we're still in beta. Yeah. Um, for the first time ever, I actually passed off a transition to Kent and he picked it up and actually ran with it without having to think about it. It just it naturally flowed like that's this. not the first time come on this is like the second <laughs> at least get the, the fuck out of here at least the second okay well it's it's still early for the, his career on picking up transitions so congratulations to kent <laughs> yay one step closer to being <laughs> not beta not um beta. Uh, you can find me at ethan kane on twitter uh and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much my my big social platform that's that's where i'm at that's where i make my ridiculous comments and uh social commentary and Share the love of the world that I have. Stupid people suck. Um, uh, but for the show, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter, and you can go to ritualmisery.com, get all kinds of good information there. Submit ideas on our subreddit, which is so underutilized. Like, nobody goes there. Like, we had this rash of people going there and submitting stuff, and, and I think we just ignored it for too long. So nobody goes there anymore. Please go there, throw in ideas. <laughs> ritualmisery.reddit.com uh, you can email us podcast at ritualmisery.com you can call and leave us a voicemail 567-69-TRMPC that's 567-698-7672 cue the music there we go and uh, you can find all this and more at ritualmisery.com you can find ways to support the show all that stuff buy t-shirts everything else we'll be wearing t-shirts if you're wearing a t-shirt at South By we'll buy you a drink uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music For thank you for listening for Kent for me and for Rice this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>